Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto finds the Yuzuamki clan's legendary dragon summoning contract and trains with the dragons part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video, is respect something that should automatically be given or is it something that has to be earned, but not this question also be applied to loyalty, can you be loyal to the home you were born in even when the home has no love for you? This is what Naruto finds himself asking himself every day. Where does his loyalty lie and who can he respect? Especially when he has been hindered for something he had nothing to do with. It was another day at the academy with all the students going through the same things as before. Naruka was droning on about the history of the shinobi, going over the same event he had done who knows how many times in the last year. Azuki was shuffling through the papers that he had collected earlier and the students were doing their best to make it look like they were paying attention. This is what Naruto was going through as he sat at the back of the class. But he wasn't even trying to make it look like he cared about the lecture. He was looking out the window as he thought to himself about what he was going to do when the day was over. Naruto. Pay attention. Arg. Naruto felt something small hit the side of his head, hard, and he rubbed the spot before looking at the front of the class, while everyone started laughing. Naruka gave a disapproving look at his student. I know you aren't the best in class, but you could at least try to make it look like you are putting in the effort. Naruto glared at the man before he grabbed the chalk and tossed it back at him. Not really trying to hit the man, just giving it back since he didn't want the man to come get it back. His eyes scanned the still laughing classmates before his eyes landed on one in particular. They kept eye contact for a few seconds before he turned away from the smiling face that looked up at him and continued to gaze out the window. Why the hell am I even here? Honestly, he knew that he might have enjoyed the academy a bit more if it wasn't for the way he was treated. Not really from the other academy students, since he could say that some of them were decent, but more so the teachers. Naruka still holds himself as a teacher and tries his best to make sure that everything he teaches reaches all of his students. However, it is clear that he focuses more on the other students than on him, despite how he has low marks in the class. That doesn't mean that he has the lowest, but with how he is seen, he might as well drop out of the academy. Okay, everyone, now that we finish today's lecture, we will be going outside to evaluate your tojutsu skills. With the graduation exam coming up soon, we want to make sure that you have what is needed in order to be genin. This got the rest of the class excited as it was the best part of the academy. The lecturing was interesting the first year, but after listening to the man drone on, they became boring really fast. Aruka cited how excited the class became, but it was to be expected. Alright, everyone, let's all head to the field. Naruto got up from his seat and waited for the rest of the class to leave before he followed them to the field. He had an idea on how things would turn out during this part of the class, but after years of it, he had gotten used to it. Or at least, he wishes he could say that. Naruto sat away from the rest of the class as he watched how the other students handled their opponents. Most of them were civilians, so they didn't really have that much in the way of training. However, this class was special in a sense, since it held all of the clan heirs and heiresses. There was one civilian who could be considered noticeable, Sakura Hirano. In terms of tojutsu and knowledge, she is the best out of the civilians, but much weaker than all of the clan heirs and heiresses. She stands out thanks to her long pink hair and red quipao, but apart from that, there was nothing else. Naruto didn't interact with her since when she is angry, she knows how to make a hit hurt and won't stop till she feels better or the one that made her mad is unconscious. Hiba Inuzuka, heir to the Inuzuka clan and his Ninkan partner Akimaru. Kiba is a slightly arrogant hothead who likes to boast about his skill and his abilities. Even when he is humbled, he still acts arrogant. Naruto stays away from Kiba as the arrogant mutt has the habit of demeaning anyone who loses, even if they don't lose to him. Shino Aburam, heir to the Aburam clan. He is a very quiet individual who keeps mostly to himself, but if he has something to say, it would be a good idea to listen. He is one of the smartest ones in the class but is very reserved and it's rare for him to say anything to anyone other than his friends. Naruto was okay with Shino, but that's because the Aburam gave him no reason to see him in a negative manner. Anada Hayuga, heiress of the Hayuga clan, wielders of the Keke Genkai. By Akugan. One of the very few decent Hayuga. She is a kind-hearted soft-spoken girl that would make sure you're okay before she considers her own well-being. Despite how the rest of the clan are, she is the odd one out and often seen as the black sheep. She has the dream of merging both the branch and main family into one, but the elders see this as a traitorous thought as they seem fine with their high throne, where they can use their own family as slaves. There was even a rumor that they planned to marry Hinata off to one of their flunkies and then brand the gentle girl with their branch seal. Naruto thought the girl had a noble but difficult goal, however, she has few who would stand by her to make sure that she wasn't beaten down. Shikamaranara, heir of the Nara clan. Smartest and laziest one in the class. 
like many of the Nara men, he prefers to take naps rather than do anything else that they might find troublesome. But what they lack in motivation, they make up for in strategic intelligence. Give them any form of information about your abilities, and they can think up strategies to subdue you. Naruto didn't have any real opinion about Shikamaru as they hardly interacted. However, he supposed he could give the Nara some positive points for not being smug about his advantages. Joji Akimichi, heir of the Akimichi clan. Want to find someone who had the strength to punch down trees but wouldn't hurt a fly. Look no further than Choji. Guy has a heart of gold and is a great friend. Don't call him fat though. You'll regret saying it and the broken bones you'll get. Naruto had a few good interactions with the Akimichi, but only a little to really consider him a friend. Ino Yamanaka, heir to the Yamanaka clan and gossip queen of the class. A girl that has a weird knack for getting information. If something juicy is in the wind, you can be sure that Ino knows it and is going to spread the news. And if you have a secret you don't want to get out, she is able to find out and consider spreading it or not. Naruto didn't really like how Ino would spread out rumors, as there are times she does it without considering the ramifications of them. There was a time when she spread a rumor about him that had little to no backing. Safe to say, he was not friendly towards her or her slightly snooty attitude. Sasuke Uchiha, heir of the Uchiha clan. Arrogant is a word you could use to describe the Uchiha. Thanks to how he was raised thinking that the Sharingan is the ultimate Dejutsu, he has this idea that he is superior to the other students at least, that was until the idea was beaten out of his head by another. He learned that despite how useful the Dejutsu is, it is like any other shinobi tool. It has its uses, but it is not unbeatable. Some tactics make the Dejutsu useless, and using it too much can cause problems later on. After learning this lesson, he began to use it sparingly so as not to depend on it too much. It's a lesson he still hasn't gotten fully, but it's nice to know that he isn't using it as a crutch. Naruto kept his distance from the Uchiha as there was another that made it their job to antagonize him. Someone that he has more of an issue with. He watched as each of them went up against either one of the civilians or another heir. When up against a civilian, it ended quickly, when up against another heir, the fight was cool to watch. He sighed as he knew that his time was almost coming up, and it was up against the one he had the biggest issue with. The one he had the biggest problem with was, Aruko Namikas vs Naruto Namikas. The call from Aruka snapped him out of his thoughts before he made it to the arena, to fight his sister. Aruko Namikas. She was a very hyper girl who seemed to smile at almost everything. Top of the class in terms of tojutsu and ninjutsu. Not the brightest, but she could pass with the prior mentioned skills alone. Not that she would even need to try since almost everyone in the academy adores her. The teachers always praised her, spent extra time with her if she needed help, and practically gave her everything she needed. She had long blonde hair that was set up in pigtails and bangs framing her face, striking blue eyes, and three whisker marks on each side of her cheeks. She was wearing her usual outfit of a loose white shirt that cut off short showing off her midriff, an open solid orange jacket that had the Uzumaki swirl on its back, a durable orange pants that had a white streak going up both sides of her legs, and blue shinobi sandals. Her weapons pouch was attached to the back of her pants, and her kunai pouch was wrapped around her right leg. The weapons she had were high quality and at a lower price, since everyone in the village practically treated her as a princess. In contrast, he was the outcast. The one the teachers would have preferred was dropped out of the academy and never became a shinobi. They had taught him poor stances, held out on information on tips needed for required jutsu, and didn't even try to correct him in terms of his weapons usage. He was wearing a loose black shirt that had orange lining on the sleeves, dark blue pants, and blue shinobi sandals. He had spiky hair the same color as Naruko, the same colored eyes, and the same whisker marks on his cheeks. The reason for the difference in treatment, even though they were siblings, was a well-kept secret. At least to those that didn't need to know. Naruto though, ready to lose again, Naruto. Gonna give up this time. Naruko crossed her arms as she gave a cocky smirk, almost as if looking down at him. Naruto looked at his sister, doing his best not to glare as he got into his stance. Do you need to ask that every time we fight? His stance was that of the academy style to jutsu. Naruko shrugged as she had a cocky smirk on her face. Well, you always lose when we fight so I figure it would be something I think I should always ask. She lowered herself to be in a fighting style that she was taught. The hummingbird style. 1. Naruko looked at the two before he brought his hand up. Ready. Begin. He dropped his hand, signaling for the two to start. Naruko charged at Naruto at speeds that many of the academy students thought to be fast. She was in a low position as she got to her brother, before she threw her palm up toward his chin. Naruto jumped back to avoid the attack before he bounced back at his sister and threw a roundhouse at her as she stood up. Naruko vaulted over Naruto's leg with a happy smirk on her face before spinning in the air and bringing her foot into Naruto's face. Naruto spun from the force of the kick and tried to rebalance himself, but he felt another kick hit him in the chest and sent him rolling on the ground. 
he quickly pushed himself off the ground and brought his arms up to block another kick to his face as Naruko didn't let up on her assault. The force of the kick caused him to skid back and give him enough room to counter. However, Naruko appeared in front of him and landed an uppercut to his chin, completely bypassing his defense. He crashed into the ground and was about to get back up till he felt a foot on his chest, keeping him down. Naruko saw this and lifted his hand. Enough. Winner. Naruko Namikaze. The rest of the class cheered for Naruko, with some of the clan heirs making small comments to each other. They laughed at Naruto as he held his stomach. Ha 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 ha, man that was one hell of a beatdown. Shikamaru sighed as he looked at Kiba. Not like you could do any better. If I recall, you couldn't even last a minute against her. Thiba stopped laughing as he crossed his arms. Humph, not like Naruto could do any better. Sasuke sighed as he turned away from the sight. He lasted longer than last time, but the end result is how it always is. Doji gestured to the two. I still don't get why there is such a difference between the two. Shouldn't they be at the same level since they live together and all that? Shikamaru patted Choji on the shoulder. I'm sure there is some reason for it. Maybe Naruto just doesn't train as hard as she does. Ino shrugged uncaringly. Whatever the reason, there is no way Naruto could win against her with how he is in class. Sakura nodded in agreement. All he does is sit in the back and not pay attention to the lesson. It's his own fault. Naruto took her foot off Naruto as she crossed her arms. I told you that you should have given up. Naruto didn't stop his glare from showing as he got up from the ground. Yeah, and you know everything, don't you? The harsh tone almost made her flinch, but she just huffed and turned away. Why are you even here in the academy? You should just give up and do something else with your life. Naruto grit his teeth but chose to just walk past her. Like you know anything. Naruto grew angry at how he was just brushing her off. Hey, you should listen to your older sister when she is talking to you. Naruto didn't even turn around as he continued walking. When you have something worthwhile, maybe then I'll consider listening to you. He didn't even bother staying for what the instructors would say. Naruka noticed this and called out. Naruto. Don't you want to stay and listen to the evaluation? Are you actually going to tell me or just say that I did poorly and that I should get better at the academy style to jutsu so that I can have a chance against the hummingbird style? He stopped and turned to look Aruka in the eyes, putting emphasis on the styles, daring the instructor to actually say that. Aruka winced at his response since that was what he was planning on telling the boy. Even he knew that anyone using the academy style to jutsu would have no chance against someone who uses a style that allows speed and precise strikes to dominate the opponent. Um, Naruto nodded as he figured that was the case. He walked back into the academy, hoping for the day to end. Later, the academy ended and all the students rushed out in order to head home or meet up with family. Naruto walked out of the academy and saw all the other students greeting family before they left. He noticed that Sasuke was greeting his older brother Itachi, who did their brotherly forehead poke. He stood at the gate for a second watching that before he turned and left. However, he paused when he saw that his sister was ahead of him, walking home. He sighed in defeat as he began to walk in the same direction as her. Naruko was thinking back on the day with a few thoughts rushing through her head. The day had started out really well, but after the fight, she lost a lot of motivation. The harsh way Naruto had spoken to her soured her mood and she was really angry with how he just brushed her off. Her thoughts were on this as she was walking home, but after a couple minutes, she felt his presence behind her. She knew it was him cause they lived in the same building. She frowned as she was trying to think of a comeback to what he said earlier. She was his older sister and she had the right to tell him what he needed to know. For about 10 minutes, the two continued to walk home with a 20-foot distance between each other. Not wanting to keep this up, Naruko spun around to say something to him, but when she did, he was gone. Turning back around, she saw that he was now roof hopping home. Growling at how he got a head start, she jumped to the roof to go after him. Naruto had gotten tired of seeing his sister's back and decided that he should just get things moving, which is why he began to roof hop. It didn't take long till he saw his sister bypass him and move faster home. He frowned at that and thought about whether he should just walk home and let her just keep going. But when he looked down, he scowled at the people that were walking on the street. It's not worth it. He continued his travels as a few of the villagers noticed him and scowled. The two continued to roof hop home with Naruko landing first with Naruto landing a few seconds later. Naruko gave a cocky smirk as she crossed her arms under her bust. I win. Naruto sighed before he walked past her to the front door. Naruko took that as a victory and followed him. Naruto opened the door with Naruko shouting. We're home. Coming out of the kitchen was a woman with long red hair, wearing a green apron over a white short-sleeved shirt and gray pants. Welcome back. She walked up to them and hugged Naruko tightly. Naruto didn't even stay there as he walked past them and up the stairs. Ashina looked over her shoulder at the departing male of her twins and frowned. She let out a deep sigh at the sight before she was brought back to her daughter as the young girl spoke. Hey, mom, are we gonna get some more training done? 
Bashina looked down at her daughter and nodded. Yes, we are gonna get back to training you. We still have to get more practice done with you in Jutsu and attempt to get our Kekei Genkai out. Aruko frowned as she didn't like doing those. She was no good at either of them. She just couldn't get the calligraphy right, and not once has she ever gotten the chains to appear. Do we have to? Ashina sighed before bonking her daughter on the head. Of course. You want to be the best Kanoichi out there, right? Seeing her daughter nod, she elaborated. Well then, we have to train hard in order for you to get as much advantage as possible. But for that, we will have to wait for, I'm home. Ashina and Naruko looked to the door to see Minato Namika's. Ad. Naruko ran to her father and hugged him tightly. Minato chuckled as he patted his daughter on the head. Easy, you make it seem like you haven't seen me in months. Naruko looked up with a big grin on her face. Nah, I'm just making sure you aren't a shadow clone. Minato shook his head. No, I left a shadow clone in the office to go over the papers that came to my desk. Bishina walked up to him and gave the man a kiss. You sure the old bats aren't gonna be mad at you? Minato shrugged. They probably won't notice it maybe. The two females laughed at that before they moved to the living room. Bishina looked to Minato and asked. So are we gonna work on some things now or after dinner? Minato thought about it before he figured that they could get some things done before dinner and get to the heavier stuff later. Telling this to the two, his daughter asked. Are Pervy Sage and Kakashi going to show up today? Minato shook his head. Not Jiraiya, he is out on a mission at the moment and won't be back for another couple of days. Kakashi though said that he would pop in to teach you some more jutsu. He wants to make sure that you get more practice with the last fire jutsu you learned before he moves on to something else. Aruko nodded before he brought his hands up. Oh, we had another sparring session during the academy. Minato tilted his head as he asked. Oh. Who did you face? I fought against Naruto. There was a pause between the adults before Kashina asked. Well. How did it go? Naruko gave a big toothy grin as she brought up her victory sign. I won easily. Minato let out a sigh before smiling at her. Well, I guess that makes sense. Naruko's smile dropped before she tilted her head in confusion as she asked her father. Dad, why won't you train Naruto? You always give me training, but I never saw you train him. He would at least be a challenge if he was better skilled so why? Minato took in a breath before he knelt down to be more at her eye level. Naruko, he doesn't have the skill or capability that you do. We have tried to teach him some of the things we know, but not once has he ever been able to get a grasp on any of what we tried. We do help him out from time to time, but he doesn't seem to appreciate what we tell him. That is why we are putting more effort into your training. He pressed his finger onto her chest as he smiled at his daughter. You have the potential to become the greatest Kanoichi ever. You want that, right? Naruko nodded. Then we should get to training so you can make it. Naruko smiled as she pumped her fists in the air. Yeah. Unseen by the others, Naruto was leaning against the wall at the top of the stairs. He scowled downstairs before he made his way to his room, making sure that he didn't make any noise to signal that he was listening. He entered and sat cross-legged on his bed, with the window behind him. He couldn't help but scoff at what his father told Naruko, and how Naruko just seemed to eat it up, as if it was the genuine truth. Minato and Kishina had not once taught him anything. And if he were to be honest, he didn't want them to train him. Especially with their reasoning and what they go through for him. That is also why he has a big issue with his sister. She gained this idea that she is better than anyone else in the class, but for some reason, she tends to look down at her like he was nothing. She enjoys beating him into the ground, she rubs her accomplishments into his face, and she never even bothers to act like a sister to him. It wasn't always like that though. There was a time where they were close, almost inseparable. Flashback, a young four-year-old Naruto poked his head over the couch of the living room as his eyes scanned left and right for his pursuer. Not seeing any sign of movement, he pulled himself over the back of the couch before trying to lower himself on the other side. He hung off the back with his legs kicking a few times before he dropped to the ground. Oof. He landed on his butt before he got up and looked around in case he was caught. Suddenly from under the couch, another young blonde came out and tackled him. Got ya. Naruto yelped in shock as the two rolled on the ground. Before he got a chance to do anything, he began laughing at being tickled by the one who tackled him. Ha 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 okay, okay, I give. You win. Humming off the boy was Naruko as she gave a big toothy smile. I win again. Once she said that she was tackled by her brother and began to laugh as he tickled her back. The two rolled around on the ground as they began to tickle each other in payback. After a few minutes, the two stopped as they laid on the ground and panting hard. Naruto lifted his arms as he gave a victory sign. I win. No, I win. Was Naruko's counter-argument. Nah, I win. I win, I win, I win, I win, I win, I win, I win. Naruto jumped onto his sister, causing them to roll on the ground again. Naruko was about to push him off, but suddenly felt him press his face on her cheek and blow, causing a raspberry sound. 
Ashi pushed him off before she did the same thing by blowing onto his cheek. It became a battle of who could do raspberries on each other the most with the two rolling around the whole floor. After another childish argument on who won that time, they chose to let it be a draw. Naruko got up from the ground before she got a bright idea. Wanna try something else? Naruto lifted his head to look at Naruko. What? Wanna try that cool thing mom and dad do? Naruto tilted his head as he didn't know what she was talking about. Getting up, he asked. What thing? Naruko frowned at her brother before she pointed out the window. That thing they do when they swing their arms at each other and jump around and do all those funny things with their hands. Naruto had to think about it for a second before he realized what she was referring to. He pumped his arms in the air in excitement. Oh yeah. The two then moved to their own side of the room before they gave a childish battle cry and ran at each other. Naruto came out of his thoughts as he heard a noise coming from outside through his window. He looked over his shoulder to see the other three outside. He listened to what they were saying as they were starting their training. Naruko groaned as her mother said they would start by trying to unlock the Uzumaki chains. Do we have to start with that? I never get it and in the end, all I do is sit there. Ashina sighed as she sat down on the ground. If we don't try it now, we won't get the chance later on, since you will be busy with your father and Kakashi. Who knows, you might be able to get it this time. Naruko grumbled as she sat down. Yeah, right. Now, let's start by focusing on your chakra flow. I know you have trouble with your chakra, thanks to your tenant, but channel chakra into your back. You remember that the back of the person has several chakra points, making it easier for us to manifest the chains. She summoned a chain from her back as a demonstration for her daughter, so she understood what she had to do and the end result. By focusing on one of those points, the Uzumaki bloodline manifests in chains that are incredibly useful. Once you get the hang of bringing one out of those points, you can learn to bring them out from other parts of your body. Naruko rolled her eyes. Yeah, I know, mom, you tell me this every time we practice. She closed her eyes in order to focus her chakra on her back. Minato smirked as he saw his daughter try to bring out her mother's bloodline. When you finish with that, we can work on the Rasengan. Naruko grew excited at that prospect as she had wanted to learn that jutsu for forever. She turned her body to look behind her at her father. Alright. You better teach me. Not like pervy sage saying he would teach me if I showed him some pervy pictures. Ashina gained a tick mark as she gave a strained smile to Minato that clearly promised pain. Remind me to talk to Jiraiya when he arrives. Minato gave a nervous chuckle at the look his wife was giving him. Naruko gained a glint in her eyes as she gained a small victorious pranking smile. Haha. <laughs> her eyes landed on the window that was for her brother's room, causing her smile to fall. She sighed before she turned back ahead and tried to meditate, with much less enthusiasm. Naruto moved to stand in the middle of his room. There was plenty of space since he had very little in terms of personal items. He had the basic necessities, but nothing more to really call his own. Not cause he didn't want anything but more because he wasn't given an allowance or any more to buy his own things. Using to focus on other things, he brought his hand up with his palm facing the ceiling. He took a breath and focused on his chakra. Clink clink. Humming out of his palm was a golden chain that moved like a snake before it dropped down and dangled in his hand. He gripped the chain before he used his other hand to pull it like he was pulling out more of it from his hand. He held it horizontally in front of him and smirked at his progress. He knew that he never wanted to be trained by his parents, but that didn't mean that he wasn't going to learn their techniques on his own. A way to get back at them after what they did to him, what they were doing to him, and what they could be planning to do with him. His mind went back to the moment that everything changed. When they stopped being family, flashback, Naruto was running through the halls of the Hokage Manor, excitement clear on his face. He was going to ask his father if he could get some training ahead of time. He knew that he and Naruko were going to be trained at the same time since his dad told them it would help keep them both at the same level. But Naruto's excitement got him wanting to start already, and it would help him get ahead of his sister, at least a little bit, since she was having a sleepover with some of her friends. Not only that, but he felt that if he became strong enough, he could help his sister in case she ever needed it. She had told him before, she was the Jinjiki or something of some large demon fox. When he heard that, he told her that he would still help her if it ever caused her trouble. She didn't need to deal with it alone, they were siblings after all. If he was strong enough, he could protect her. As he got closer to the Hokage office, he chose to slow down and gained a cheeky smirk. He began to tiptoe toward the door as he thought that surprising his dad would be fun. He pressed himself on the wall and shuffled closer to the door. Soon, he began to hear voices coming from the room and got curious about what it was they were saying. Closer he got to the room till the voice became clear. And that's what I think we should be doing now. Focus on Naruko's training so that she could fulfill the prophecy with no issue. Naruto recognized the voice to be pervy sages. He smiled wider as he always thought the man was funny with all his weird dances and toads. He stifled his laughter as he thought that it would be fun to surprise the man along with his father. 
Bernardo sat in his seat as he thought about what his sensei had told him. He trusted the man, but this wasn't the first time Jiraiya thought that someone was the destined one from the old toad's prophecy. Jiraiya, are you absolutely sure that she is the one that the prophecy speaks of? Let's not forget who you thought it was before. Jiraiya sighed as he crossed his arms. I know I jumped the gun last time, but who else could it be? She holds the Kaiubi, which matches the part of the prophecy. One born of the leaf who holds the burden that could affect the world will either bring it peace or light the flames to its destruction. That sounds too ominous for a prophecy of peace, Kirby Sage. Naruto was surprised to hear his mother's voice too. And the conversation sounded so heavy that he stopped his advance and just stood there against the wall. He heard Jiraiya sigh before continuing from here. I don't make these up, I just hear them. But can you deny that it sounds like she fits the prophecy accurately? He saw that the two were truly considering what he was saying and were agreeing with him on that. There is also the part of the prophecy that is me worried. It says. This being will withstand the hardships within the tree of its birth and face the dark tree from beyond and within the home of all. He took a heavy breath as he looked seriously at the two. If I had to guess, there is something within Kanoha that will cause trouble for her, and then there is the other part. The mirror image of the chosen one will stand between the chosen and the choice. Minato didn't like the sound of that last part and had to ask. What does that last part mean? The tension in the room was heavy, and even Naruto felt the tension from the hallway before Jiraiya gave his thoughts on it. I believe it means that Naruto might stop Naruko from achieving the peace she could bring. He is the mirror image of Naruko, seeing how he is her twin. The room was silent for a few moments till Kishina asked. What does that mean for Naruto? Jiraiya looked grim before he spoke. I think it means that Naruto is going to be a problem. Choosing to not beat around the bush, he brought up his idea. So I think we should do what we can to avoid that. No training and you should hold him back as much as possible without making it seem obvious. The statement caused the other two to pause at his statement. Winato thought about what Jiraiya said and how this would affect Naruto. But if what the man said was true, it could be beneficial in the long run for everyone. He sat there for a few minutes in heavy thought till he finally came to a conclusion. Alright. Naruto's eyes widened hearing his father agree with him. He couldn't believe that Jiraiya would bring up the idea of holding him back and not training him in any manner. And then there was his father agreeing with it and not a word of protest from his mother. Flashback end, he may have been five at the time, but he understood that they were seeing him as a threat to a plan that he had no clue of. They were going to try and keep him weak and hinder him as much as they could. And they have been doing it ever since. Not only that, Minato had made others do the same to him, including the instructors of the academy. That is why they tend to try and sabotage him every chance they get. From giving him tests that have a jinjutsu over them to show different questions, teaching him poor forms, and pitting him against people they knew were better than him into jutsu. Then there was the cascading result of such things. Naruto doesn't know how it got to this point, but for some reason, the villagers began to treat him as if he were a plague. They would spit in his direction, sneer at him, and would throw things at him if they could. Naruko was soon influenced by the treatment he was given and began to look down at him. Everything he did was like something she felt she needed to scoff at. She gained this haughty attitude any time she was around him and only him. It was like she thought that he was nothing but a punching bag, a stepping stone for her to get to where she wanted to be, and never defended him when he needed it. In fact, she became one of the many who would make fun of him when he was around. Naruto didn't know if she was even aware of the prophecy, but they stopped being as close as they used to be. The biggest thing that pissed him off was that his father had set up a few anbu to watch him and make sure that he doesn't do anything that could be considered improving too much. If they see him doing some intense training, they would drop their anbu appearance and have one of them come in as a chunin or jonin and tell him that he can't be training where he was. There were even some times they would launch a jutsu in his direction, telling him that he shouldn't be anywhere near there so that he wouldn't get hurt by their own training. They didn't keep an eye on him when he was at home since Minato was there. So he did small practice in his room where he wouldn't be disturbed. It's why he was able to do what he could do and he was going to keep it a secret for now till he had a bit more freedom. He practiced his chakra sensing ability early on, which is why he was able to tell that he was being followed by Anbu. He was able to use the chakra chains that his mother was trying to teach Naruko by listening to his mother's description. He was even working on some other skills that he knew would help him in the future, all of which he had gathered in secret. Which was difficult with the Anbu keeping track of wherever he went. This was how he was improving, by doing it in secret, and he was going to keep it a secret till the time was right. And that time was coming soon. He can wait a little bit longer. He waited for years for this, and it was so close now. He will gain his freedom. Even if he has to fight for it. Blue eyes opened as the sun peeked in through the window, ready to wake all those to a bright new day. The owner of the eyes groaned before she rolled over and buried her face into the bed as she brought a pillow to cover her head. The birds began to wake up as well as they started their morning routine of chirping their good mornings to all those still trying to get some more sleep. 
Bro and all right already. She turned back to lay on her back before sitting up. Stupid birds. Stupid son. She threw off her blanket and got up before glaring at the window. One day, I will destroy the sun. She trudged to her closet before opening it and grabbing another set of clothes. She left her room and walked down the hall, past her brother's room, and into the bathroom. The bathroom was a full set, with a shower and tub. On the left was the sink with an assortment of products, mainly products of Naruko's. She moved toward the shower, placing her clothes on the lip of the sink, before stripping off her pajamas. She entered the shower and turned on the water before she began to clean herself. She grabbed her bottle of shampoo before frowning at how light it was. Aw, oh, man. Now, I gotta get another bottle. She got out of the shower and walked over to the sink, not caring about getting the floor wet from the water dripping off her body. She opened the cabinet under the sink and grabbed one of the many bottles that were stacked in there. I really like my long hair, but taking care of it is such a pain. She moved back to the shower, tossing the empty shampoo bottle into the trash. She got back into the steaming water before she began to clean her body. After 40 minutes of showering, she threw open the shower curtain with her arms spread out and a big smile on her face. Ah, much better. She grabbed the sole towel that was on the wall hanger and began to dry herself off. She walked over to the mirror as she ruffled her towel in her hair. She finished up and took the towel off her head before she brought her hand up to wipe the steam off the mirror, enough to see her head, only to frown at the sight of her hair being a complete mess. HRRRRM. She tossed her towel to the ground before she opened the mirror cabinet and her eyes scanned all the things inside. Makeup, skincare, perfume, lotion, I get that Eno loves this stuff, but I barely use any of them. She slightly grumbled as the stuff made it hard to find what she was looking for. The products were gifts that Eno gave her on her last birthday. She had used them on occasion, but they weren't used much. She paid little to no attention to the fact that there was nothing of her brother's inside it. She found her hairbrush and grabbed it so she could straighten out her hair from the destroyed bird's nest she had for hair. Another 40 minutes were spent getting it to its normal soft straight texture. Once that was done, she smiled at herself in the mirror with a nod. Now I'm ready. She nodded and was ready to head out before she put her hands on her hips and bounced, allowing her to see her perky breast bounce in the mirror that was now free of steam. She blushed at how she was about to leave the bathroom without any clothes on. Oops. She hastily grabbed her panties and put them on before she grabbed her bra. After she adjusted them so that her breasts would fit in the piece of clothing, she tried to get the clip before frowning at how tight it was. Don't tell me I gotta get a bigger pair. She wouldn't complain about the Uzumaki genetics that gifted her with a figure at a young age, but it was a headache having to go to the store more often than the other girls to have to buy another pair of bras. Her mother even made a joke that if she kept growing, she might be as big as Tswan when she becomes a woman. She grabbed her shirt and put it on before getting to her jacket. She tossed her jacket into the air in an attempt to mimic her father, putting on his coat in the cool way she saw him do, only to yelp when something fell out of the jacket. Ouch. Thunk, she looked down to see a kunai lightly stabbed into the ground. Why is there a kunai in my jacket? She tried to think of the reason till she remembered that she had put a kunai in her pocket yesterday when she was talking to her friends after practice. She had picked it up after she dropped it from the match and absentmindedly put it there. Oh. She brought her hand up to her right cheek to feel the cut it left. She gave a flat glare at the blood on her fingers before she huffed and shook her head. Not gonna let this ruin my day. She knew that it would heal soon, so she chose to ignore it. She took a step to leave the bathroom till, snap, she paused as she felt something snap, and it was clear that her panties snapped. She looked down and could feel them slip off her. She glared at her pants as she growled out. Oh, come on. She left the bathroom and made her way to her room. Once inside, got redressed with the required undergarments before she put the kunai down on her vanity desk and picked up a pair of hairbands. When she looked at the panties that had snapped, she figured that the kunai that fell from her jacket not only cut her cheek but the strap of her panties as well. Now, I have to go shopping. She grumbled to herself before looking at the hair bands in her hand. She stared at them for a second before she brought her hair up into her pigtails. Satisfied with her normal hairstyle set, she nodded before running out of her room to get some breakfast. She jumped down the stairs, landing on the bottom of them, before she looked to the dining room to see her father reading some papers with a cup of coffee while her mother was in the kitchen making breakfast. Ashina looked over to her daughter with a bright smile on her face. Good morning, Naruko, sleep well. Aruko nodded happily as she sat down at the table. Minato lowered his papers and smiled at his daughter. So, what are your plans for today, Naruko? It may be Saturday, but your graduation exam is coming up this week, so I want to make sure that you are ready for it. Aruko groaned as she laid her head on the table. Daddy, it's Saturday. Why can't I just go have fun? Minato chuckled as he ruffled her hair. All right, I'll let you do what you want, but please take some time in the day to get some training done. At least for the graduation required jutsu. Aruko lifted her head before crossing her arms. 
Dad, I can already do the Kawarimi and Henge easily. And I can do the Shadow Clone Jutsu, something that is better than the Clone Jutsu. Not to mention that the extra credit Jutsu part is going to be a snap, since I have a bunch of Jutsu already. She grumbled when she felt his hand on her head again. I know, but I just want to make sure that you graduate. Baruko smiled up at her father as her mother put a plate of food in front of her. Ashina smiled at her daughter. You can't start the day on an empty stomach. Baruko nodded as she looked at her plate. It was some scrambles, bacon, sausage, toast, hashbrin, and a glass of milk. Thanks, mom. With that, she began to eat her breakfast while her parents watched her for a second before getting back to what they were doing. It was then that another set of footsteps was heard, and the rest of the family looked to the stairs to see Naruto coming down the stairs. The adults paused in what they were doing as they stared at the boy as he came in. The only sound that could be heard was the clinking of Naruko's utensils as she continued to eat. Naruto walked over to the kitchen, ignoring the subtle glare that Minato was giving him and a scrutinizing look from Kashina. Naruto got these looks every time he came into the kitchen, as if they were waiting for him to make a sudden move in order to react. He opened the fridge and grabbed the bread before he moved to the toaster. Is that all you're going to eat? Naruto looked over his shoulder at his sister as she took a bite out of her eggs. He frowned at her before answering. It's not like I have anything else to eat. His eyes shifted to the stove to see that there was nothing left on the frying pan and no signs of any more being made. Naruko swallowed her mouthful as she frowned at the tone her brother was giving her. Hey, it's not my fault you got up late and missed breakfast. Naruto turned to stare at his sister. Who's the one that spent more than two hours in the bathroom taking up all the time? Hey, you should have gotten up early in order to do whatever it is you need in the shower. It's not like I. Enough. The two siblings stopped and looked at their father. Minato put his files down and glared at the male of the two. Naruto, that is no way to speak to your older sibling. Naruto met his glare. Really? Am I supposed to suck up to her just because she is older than me by 10 minutes? Or maybe I'm supposed to praise her for everything to lie. Smack. Naruto stopped as a hand smacked him across the face before he turned to his mother to see her hand still up, ready to hit him again. He didn't put his hand on his face, letting it sting. That is enough out of you. Another word and you won't be eating anything today. Kishina stared into her son's eyes as he gave her a defiant look. Naruto didn't look away from his mother after hearing the threat. This wasn't the first time that she did this and he knew already that she wasn't going to cook for him anyway. She never did. Naruto's hand shot to his right as his toast popped out into the air from the toaster, not looking away. In his periphery, he saw Minato shift in his seat and he knew that man was a move away from attacking him. He brought one of the pieces of toast to his mouth before he walked past her. Naruko looked at what her brother did and asked. Aren't you going to at least put some butter or jam on it or something? There isn't any. Kishina glared at Naruto as he walked by. Hey, you're not allowed to leave. Naruto paused at the stairs before he looked at her. And what am I supposed to do here? Wait till Naruko finishes her meal. Naruko spoke up here. You might as well. What else are you gonna do? Naruto looked at his sister, over his father's shoulder, and down at her plate. Like I should sit at the same table while you eat all the food mom made for you and you alone. He could see Minato have a hand lay on the table and knew that if he stayed here any longer, things could get bad. He began to walk up the stairs as he finished the first piece of toast. Naruko glared at the stairs before she slumped into her seat and continued to eat, much more subdued. Minato noticed this and got up from his seat and moved to stand next to Naruko. Don't worry about it, Naruko. You shouldn't let this spoil your mood. Just think about passing the graduation exam and how you will be a genin soon. Naruko smiled up at her father before she chose to finish her meal. Minato looked over to the stairs with a slight glare on his face. Naruko finished her breakfast before she bolted up the stairs in order to get her equipment. Minato got up from his seat and kissed his wife as he got ready to leave for the Hokage office. Do you have any plans for today? Ashina shook her head. No, I plan on staying in for the day. We have plenty of everything in the fridge and pantry so we don't need to buy anything. Minato nodded before his eyes shifted to the stairs. Then keep an eye on things here. You know what you have to do. Ashina nodded as she looked at the stairs. They heard some fast-paced steps before they saw their daughter running down. Naruko paused at the sight of her parents and smiled. I'm heading out. Minato nodded. Good, make sure that you get some training done. Naruko rolled her eyes with her smile still on her face. Got it. She waved at them before she ran out the door. Minato nodded before he looked at his wife. I'll be in the office for the whole day, but I will be here for dinner, so can you wait for me? Ashina nodded. Of course. Before she could kiss him, they heard the door open again. The two looked to the door to see Naruko running back inside. Sorry, I forgot something in my room. Minato shook his head as he let out a fond sigh. That girl. Naruko ran back down the stairs before bolting out the door. Ashina and Minato laughed a bit before Minato took a step back and waved at his wife before flashing away. 
The Sheena smiled fondly at the empty space before it dropped as she looked up at the ceiling. For a few seconds, she stood there before she moved to the kitchen to wash the dishes from breakfast. Aruko ran out of the house with a big smile on her face. Once she was on the streets, she began to walk through the streets. She walked the streets with her arms crossed and head tilted back in thought. She was so deep in thought that she didn't notice the civilians bowing and greeting. Hmm, what to do today? Her thoughts went to the graduation that was coming up. Her excitement could be seen as a smile appeared on her face. She knew that she would be put on a team and given a sensei, but she didn't have much expectations of it. Anyone would do for her and that was okay. But as her mind was on that, she figured that maybe she should get some training done. She knew she was ready, but she wanted more. Since it was early in the day, she knew that many of the training grounds would be empty and there was one that she wanted to get to. Turning down an alley, she began to make her way to get some training done. Okage office. Minato was in his office going over some documents that showed the village's budget so he could establish where the money should go for this month. Normally he would receive these reports weekly and then it was then he would look at where the money would go for that week. But Minato would do it for a month so he could have a more efficient money flow instead of having it flux constantly. Minato felt a breeze from the window and knew that he had a visitor. Hello sensei. Hey, kid. Jiraiya sat on the windowsill, looking over the room. No matter how many times he came here, he couldn't help but imagine Hiruzen sitting at the chair, grumbling about paperwork. Looks like you have everything handled here. With how nice the view is around the village, I don't see anything going wrong anytime soon. Minato sighed as he knew what his sensei was referring to. There was never a visit from the man that didn't have some sort of innuendo. He would like to have a casual talk with his sensei, but he knew that he had a job to do. As much as I would like to avoid talking about something that would get my wife to kill me, we have other matters to discuss. Gareya chuckled as he got inside the room. Geez, kid, this life is getting to you. Can't even have any fun anymore. He stood in front of the desk and crossed his arms with a smile still on his face. Lenato made a hand gesture, causing swishing sounds heard by the two. Once he was sure, he did a few hand signs before he pressed his hand on the top of his desk, causing an array of writing to spread out throughout the room. Once the room was sealed and no sound would leave, Jurea's smile dropped as he looked at his students seriously. Lenato looked at the older man with a serious look. What do you have to report? Jurea took a breath as he began his report. Well, kid, from what I could get, there is an organization that is gathering high-ranked missing nin from all of the great villages. For the time being, we don't know what they are after, but since they are gathering A to S rank shinobi, I am going to be keeping an eye on them if they become a threat. Lenato took in this info and thought about it for a second before asking. Do you know any of the members? So far, they only have six members. The only one that I was able to gather was former Mist Swordsman Kissam. My sources say they are still looking for members, so I am going to have to spread my search out a bit wider in order to keep track of any living missing nin that could be potential members. Lenato sighed as this group was something they would need to keep an eye on since they didn't know what they were after. But the fact that they are going after powerful missing nin told him that they would need to be wary. Well, it is good to be aware of them. Make sure that you find out what it is they are after and inform me of any suspicious movement they are doing. But make sure not to go beyond your bounds. They are a group of missing nin, so we don't have jurisdiction on them unless they stay in the land of fire. Gureya nodded. I plan to. After he finished this little report, he moved on to other matters and his smile returned. So how are things with Naruko? Minato smiled at the mention of his daughter. Her training has improved to a great degree. She hasn't been able to get any of Kishina's training done, but she has gotten proficient in using my fighting style, and she began learning the Rasengan. Gureya smiled brighter at that. Already? How far has she gotten? We only started a few days ago so she is still on the first stage. Her speed is about mid tune and level, but I can say that she will get faster soon. Minato leaned back in his seat as he thought about Naruko's training. How about her Fuinjutsu? Minato frowned as he shook his head. She has little to no affinity for it. She has gotten better in her calligraphy, but nowhere close for her to use seals in a fight or for general usage. Gureya let out a whining groan. Damn, was hoping I could show her some tips on it. Guess I'll have to wait till she is better. How is she compared to the other academy brats? I have no doubt that she will be labeled rookie of the year. She has her faults, but in skill, she is a level above the others. He had a proud smile as he knew that his daughter was more skilled than he was when he was her age, in some aspects anyway. The two stood there proud at the progress the girl was making before the older of them frowned and asked. And what about Naruto? At this, Minato opened a drawer before pulling out a few papers. When he is at home, with either me or Kishina, he does a small bit of practice, but so far, nothing to write about. The reports that I get from my Anbu have told me that his skill is abysmal. His Tejutsu is slopping, full of openings, and he wastes energy in his attacks. 
even with his Uzumaki genetics, he tires himself out fairly quickly. His chakra control is also poor. He may not have anywhere close to Naruko's chakra levels due to her being the Jinchuriki, he still has Uzumaki levels, but without the proper guidance, he wastes chakra in what he has. From what was seen, he can do the hinge, but with his lack of attention to detail, he gets bits of other people wrong, so he is easy to find if he uses it. The Kawarimi is something he can do, but the clone jutsu is his biggest fault. He overloads the clone, causing it to come out as a deflated vision of himself. He has no extra jutsu under his belt, so he has very little to use in fights. He moved to the next page of the report that the Anbu had given him. His handwriting is atrocious, so seals are something he will never have, and the test scores he has is barely passing. If I had to give him a placement in skill and knowledge, he is barely mid-civilian level. But with how he lacks the ability to use two of the three required jutsu efficiently, I doubt he will graduate. Hiraya nodded as he filed all the info he had gotten. Has he shown any hostility toward Naruko? Minato nodded. He seems to have animosity toward her. I am not sure when it started, but he has grown more and more hostile toward her. I fear that what you told us about the prophecy is coming true. He may very well be the one who could stop Naruko from achieving the peace we want for the shinobi world. I fear it may lead up to Naruko's death with how he treats her. This morning I was afraid that he might attack Naruko with how angry he was glaring at her. I was ready to take him down if he made a move toward her, but he just left the room. Hiraya frowned at that. So he is the one that could stop her. And with what you said, I wouldn't doubt that he might aim to kill her. Whether because he is jealous of her for having a power he doesn't or something else, we have to be ready for it. His frown disappeared as he brought up a brighter point. But with how you said their skills are, we won't have to worry about her, since she could take him out if he does attack her. Minato still maintained his frown. Even a civilian can kill a shinobi if he gets one lucky shot. He thought about what else he could do in order to prepare Naruko, in case Naruto found a way to beat her. Perhaps I should have Tsunade return to the village in order to teach her some of her techniques. Hiraya crossed his arms as his frown became a bit more sober. Don't know if she'll come since she still blames Konoha for what happened to Dan, her brother, and Sinesi. Minato nodded with a sigh. I know but if it's to have Naruko prepared, I am willing to do what is needed. She is the one who will bring peace to the shinobi world, something that we have wanted for so long. Naruko needs to be ready. Maybe I can establish her proposal for a medical program to entice her to return. But how she wants things to be done right, she would need to come here in order to oversee it as it grows. He looked up at his sensei as he continued. I will leave it to you to find her and bring her back. Hiraya had an aura of dread at the new mission he was given. Are you trying to kill me, Gaki? The second I start bringing this up, she may punch me all the way back to Konoha wherever she is. Minato gave a playful smirk at Hiraya. Then you should be able to handle it since you have had to deal with those most of your life. Hiraya slumped. You're so cruel to your sensei. The two shared a laugh at this little bit before he asked. So where are Naruko and Naruto at the moment? Minato looked out the window with a smile at the sight. Naruko is having a free day in the village Naruto is at home, under the supervision of Kishina. Kishina was in the living room looking over some seals that she planned on having Naruko practice when they began her training again. She knew that Naruko was no good at it, but she needed to learn this stuff for the future. She was putting in some practice seals for Naruko till. Rumble, she felt the house rumble a bit and she felt a spike of chakra coming from above her. She looked up in shock before she ran toward the stairs. She could feel the amount of chakra coming from upstairs and couldn't help but dread what he was doing. She ran over to the room and burst through the door to pause at the sight. Naruto was in the middle of his room, in a horse stance with his hands in a tiger seal, as a dome of chakra was flaring around him. He had his eyes shut as he continued to channel his chakra at what he was doing. H H R R R R R R R R R R N N N N N for a few more seconds, he continued to grunt in concentration till, poof, Naruto peeked through one of his eyes to his side before he groaned in frustration at the sight. Laying on the ground was a deflated form of a failed clone attempt that looked to be twitching. He growled in frustration at the sight. Naruto. He jumped at the harsh call and looked to the door to see his mother standing there with a look of anger. How many times have I told you, you are not allowed to train in the household? Naruto frowned at her as she had said this to him many times. But all I'm doing is practicing the clone jutsu. No. You are not allowed to train at the household. If you want to train, you go to the training ground like everyone else. Naruto glared at her as he pointed out the window. Then can I train in our training field in the background? No. That is meant for your sister and you are not allowed to use it. Go to one of the public fields if you want to train. Naruto glared at her. He opened his mouth in order to retaliate but. Smack. He paused as he felt her slap to his face. He didn't lose his glare as she met his. Ishina glared down at him before she turned around. Go to the public grounds to train. Not here. She left the room and shut the door. 
She took a few steps from the door before she gripped her chest in pain. She knew of the prophecy, she was there when Jiraiya gave it, and she knew that in order to protect her daughter from what might hurt her, she would do anything. But why did the threat have to be her son? It hurt her having to hurt one of her children, but she had realized that if she didn't do what she was doing, she could lose both of her children. She was so afraid of the thought of her children dying that she subconsciously attached to the idea of protecting them. Yet the one that could lead to their death was one of them, she clung to the fact that, in order to protect her daughter, she must shun her son. After years of this, her actions of shunning him turned into anger at the idea that Naruto would be the cause of Naruko's death. This did not mean that it didn't hurt that she had to hurt her son. But after so many years, it became easier to the point that these bits of heartache were now few and in between. She thought back to the defiant look Naruto was giving him, and her heartache stopped. Those could be the very eyes he gives her when he kills Naruko. But Kishina wouldn't allow that. To protect her daughter, she would take down her son. But she couldn't do anything yet since nothing was clear just yet. There was still that small voice of doubt about all this, but for now, she would continue this way. Especially since she has another reason now. She began to walk down the stairs, keeping her senses up in case he used his chakra again. Naruto growled at the door before he sat on the ground and crossed his legs. He looked out of the window as he was really tempted to leave so he wouldn't have to be here, but would it be worth it if he left the house to be spied on by the Anbu? He crossed his arms as he contemplated if he should. Ha! Naruko swiped her leg at the training post so hard that it snapped and flew away. When she landed on the ground, she panted as a bit of sweat ran down her face. After a few seconds of this, she stood back up and took a deep breath to recenter herself. She looked at the post and frowned at how her target was now useless. Her shoulders dropped at that before she put a hand on her chin and thought of what she could do right now. She gained an idea and brought her hand into a single hand sign. Shadow clone jutsu. Poof. Naruko took a breath before turning to her clone to see her brother standing there. She knew what she was doing and frowned at it. She looked him over before she got into a stance. The clone got into a stance as they stared each other down. Naruko charged at the clone before she jumped and swung her leg to kick him in the head. The clone blocked the kick before gripping the leg and swung the girl away. Naruko flipped in the air before she kicked off the ground and brought her fist into an uppercut in the clone's chin. The clone then poofed away and leaving her alone in the clearing. She took a breath before she summoned another clone in order to do the same as before. This went on for a few hours as she got some training done. Naruko blacked the kunai swipe from the clone with her own kunai as she and the clone were parrying each other's kunai. The clone parried upward before he let the kunai go to spin over his head before he spun left, grabbed the kunai with his left hand and used the momentum to swipe at Naruko. Naruko leaned away from the strike before she brought her kunai up into the clone, dispelling it. She panted a bit before standing up straight. And that's 30. She wiped her forehead with her wrist as she thought about her training. She had fought against 30 clones, each one giving her a better challenge. But as they improve, she improves, and that was good in her book. She wiped her left cheek with her wrist and paused when she felt something other than sweat. She brought her wrist forward and looked to see that there was a bit of blood. Oh, great. Letting out a sigh, she felt that she had done enough training for the day, but there were still things she could do for the day. She made a choice and began to leave the training field for another sort of improvement. Once she left, an Anbu dropped onto the field and looked over the results. It's impressive how much she has improved. Training by using the image of that boy I can say that what the Hokage wished aligns with this. The Anbu looked in the direction of where the girl left with a second thought. Wonder how much better she would be if she used the Kyubi's power. But that last inquiry, the Anbu left. Naruko looked up at the building in front of her with an expression of dread. She didn't want to go into it, but she knew that it was the best place to get what she wanted. Letting out a deep sigh, she walked in to get things over with. Lady Namek is welcome to the Kanoha Library. The building Naruko entered was the Kanoha Library, a large building of three floors and an open plan first floor that had several different sections, from fantasy to horror. For civilians and shinobi. Naruko walked up to the female who was at the front desk with a smile on her face. Thank you for having me. I came here cause I feel I need a bit more under my jutsu belt. She beamed at how the girl came to them in order to learn something new. There were many different locations that hold things for shinobi, such as the shinobi archives on the south side of the village and the jutsu library in the west. The fact that the Hokage's daughter came to this public library would boost the recognition of the facility. That is why the staff at the library feel ecstatic when the girl comes here since this library isn't used as much as the others. The jutsu they have in their shinobi section deals with E, D, and low rank C rank jutsu. They would occasionally get a B rank jutsu, but that is only if it is a low B rank jutsu and another far more efficient version is found. And the majority of the shinobi care only for the better jutsu she bowed at the girl. Of course, is there something specific that you want? Naruko put a finger on her chin and thought before she shrugged. Do you mind showing me what you have? The woman nodded. Of course. 
She put a sign on the desk to say she would be back in 10 minutes, before she gestured politely for the girl to follow her. The two walked up to the third floor with Naruko looking around at the sections they passed. This wasn't the first time she came here, but sometimes the facility moves the sections around. They made it to the Shinobi Jutsu section, and they began to walk through the aisles for the girl to find what she was looking for. After 30 minutes of going through the Jutsu section and considering the recommendations and the ones that caught her interest. The woman bowed to the girl as they finished and Naruko was leaving. It was a pleasure assisting you, Lady Namikas. Naruko looked over her shoulder and smiled at the woman. Thank you for your assistance. She left the building and made it to the street and wondered what she should do now. It was as she was thinking that. Rumble. Naruko looked down at her stomach and chuckled sheepishly. Guess it's time for lunch. Nodding to herself, she began to make her way to get something to eat. Naruto slurped up some of the noodles from his bowl as he was enjoying a nice meal of ramen at Ichiraku Ramen. If you eat that any faster then you aren't going to be able to enjoy it, Naruto. Naruto looked up to see AM giving him an incredulous look. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the flavor and the fact that you are using the noodles from the previous batch in this one. AM eyed him as she crossed her arms. How would you know that? Naruto pointed his chopstick at the bowl as he gave a foxy smile. Because I can tell one Raymond bowl from another. I can tell you that you had to use two different packs of noodles and ingredients since the flavor is different from one in the other. AM shook her head in exasperation. I swear, you have the weirdest skills, Naruto. You keep coming up with something that no normal person could think of. I'm surprised that you don't make a career out of the odd things you can do. If I did that, I would make a killing, but I wouldn't be able to enjoy my free time as much as I like. The two had a chuckle at that, both knowing that Naruto wouldn't be able to do that. AM crossed her arms as she looked at the boy. Though, I do find it weird how you get Ryo only to spend it on the very thing you make. Naruto stuck his tongue out at her. Hey, I think it works in my favor. Naruto actually works at Ichiraku Raymond. It is how he is able to get any money to use for himself, since he doesn't have any money himself. He was offered to work at the stand by Tucci when the man found the boy sitting at one of the park's benches with a rumbling stomach. The man offered him a free bowl, but the boy said that he should at least work at washing dishes in order to pay for it. After that, the boy would occasionally come in order to work for a meal, till the man offered to hire the boy. Now Naruto works in the kitchen, where no one can see him, to get some income. However, a good amount of the income goes right back to the shop, since he tends to eat here than anywhere else. AM giggled at what Naruto said before she gained a questioning look. Naruto, why do you come here at this time every time you are free? I mean, it's almost always the same time with only a couple of minutes difference. Naruto had taken a bite of noodles as he blinked at her before he slurped them up. Swallowing his food, he answered. I come here because not many people eat at this time. I want to avoid dealing with the people of this village. Naruto, don't you think that you are being a bit too harsh? Naruto paused as his look became serious. No. After a few seconds, he looked up at her and spoke. Actually, can I get this bowl to go? AM was a bit surprised about the request before she looked at the clock. Realizing what the time meant, she spoke. Naruto, don't you think that you should, AM? She paused at the harsh tone he was giving her, but she knew why he did it. She may not fully understand it, but she knew it. I appreciate what you are trying to do, but it won't ever happen. So please to go. AM sighed before she took the bowl from the table and took it to the back. After a minute, she came back with a takeout box and handed it to Naruto. I still think you should try, Naruto. Naruto took the box gratefully before he moved to walk past the counter to the back of the restaurant. Maybe if it were years ago, but now he opened the door and looked over his shoulder at her. I can't. He left the restaurant out the back entrance before looking around to see that he was in the clear. AM sighed as she watched him leave before she moved to the stove so she could work on the next batch of ramen. It was only seconds later that she heard the sound of incoming customers. Sakura, I'm telling you that eating here is good for you. Naruko, you are the only one that would say something like that. You live off the stuff. I don't know, forehead. Maybe all of that ramen goes straight to her chest. Why else would she, Eno? AM moved from the back and saw Sakura, Eno, and Naruko sitting at the seats. Welcome to the Chiraku ramen. Can I take your order? Naruko put a bag onto the floor and smiled at AM as she raised her hand. Hey, AM, can I get a bowl of Maizo Raymond? Sakura raised her hand as she ordered. I'll take a plate of rice crackers. Ino was about to order the same thing till her eyes went to Naruko's chest. I'll have what Naruko is having. Sakura looked past Naruko, since the whiskered blonde female was sitting in between the two, and gave the Yamanaka a look of shock. Why? Ino just gave Sakura a pointed look before pointing to Naruko's chest. Those are two very good reasons. She then pointed to Sakura with a teasing smirk. And you could use some of it if you ask me. Sakura glared at Ino as she was really tempted to hit the Yamanaka, but she couldn't reach her. Crossing her arms, in frustration and to hide her chest, she huffed and looked away. 
Haruko looked down at her chest before she lightly slapped Ino's shoulder. Don't use me as a way to tease Sakura. Anyway, are you two ready for the graduation exam? Sakura nodded as she answered. Yeah, I've been studying a lot so I can get as high a score as I can. Ino shrugged as she was nonchalant about it. I'm sure I'll do fine. I know I'll graduate, but I already know that I'll be part of the Ino Shikacho team. My dad already told me about it. She leaned her elbow on the table as she looked at Naruko. But what about your brother? Do you think he is ready? Naruko scoffed as she shook her head. No way. He's no good at tojutsu, has no ninjutsu, and we've all heard his test scores when he is called out. There is no way he can pass with those levels of skills. Sakura tilted her head as she asked her. There is something I want to know, why isn't he as good as you? You both live in the same house and have the fourth hokage as a father. He should be just as good as you, right? Naruko shook her head. He just sucks at all the stuff he was taught. Dad told me that he had tried to teach Naruto some of the stuff, but Naruto didn't care about any of the stuff, and when he did try, he would suck at it. She crossed her arms with a scowl on her face. I don't get why he is trying got be a shinobi if he is no good at it. You've seen that almost everyone in the class can beat him. Sure he gets a couple of wins, but it's all luck. He should quit trying. Ino shrugged her shoulders. Maybe he has his reasons. Baruko huffed out of her nose. I doubt it. AM overheard all this, and she had to wonder herself why Naruto was trying to be a shinobi if he wasn't any good at it. But maybe he has his reasons. I just don't know what they are. Night. Naruko was heading home as the day had ended, and she was tempted to just go to bed. She saw that she was almost there only to pause. She grumbled to herself as she knew this made things complicated. Great. She turned into an alley to get things done. Hashina was setting up the table as she had finished making dinner. As she put the plates on the table, a flash of yellow was seen, and she looked up to see that Minato had arrived. About time you got here. We were about to eat without you. Minato chuckled as he took off his coat and hung it on the wall before walking up to his wife. I don't think I did anything that would warrant you doing that to me. Ashina put her hands on her hips as she gave him a mock glare. Oh, I'm sure you did something that could warrant it. Did you forget about last month when you got the wrong item for me? Minato sweat dropped as he thought about the incident. But, Kushi, you told me to get the specific brand, and I was sure I got it right. I don't believe you did, since you got it wrong. Minato felt tiny as Kashina gained size and looked down at him with an aura of anger. Before anything else could be done, the door opened, and the two looked to see Naruko walking through the door. The two of them spoke at the same time. Welcome back, Naruko. Naruko smiled at the two and tried to hold in her drool, as she could smell the food coming from the kitchen. Hey, guys, I'm back. Minato moved to hug his daughter before he looked her over. So where were you all day? Naruko shrugged as she moved her bag behind her back. I was around. And before you ask, I got some training done. Minato nodded as that aligned with the report that he got from the Anbu. The Anbu member didn't watch her through the whole trip and only watched her training, but that was fine. As long as she was getting better, he was happy. He took a step back and eyed the girl as he saw her trying to hide something. Naruko, what do you have behind your back? Naruko shook her head as she took a step back. Nothing. Minato crossed his arms as he looked disapprovingly at his daughter. Naruko, you know it isn't nice to keep secrets in this family. Naruko took a few more steps away from the man. I said it's nothing. Naruko, show me. No. Came her whiny defiant answer as she began to run away from the man. Minato began to chase her as the two began to run around the living room at normal civilian speed. Naruko, show me what you have. No. Ashina sighed as she watched her daughter and husband run around like children. She looked up at the ceiling as she focused her senses on Naruto. She did not feel any fluctuation of chakra coming from him till she felt a small flicker of it. It was so small that she didn't think much of it. It was so small that it was negligent. But how poor his control was, if he tried anything, she would feel it instantly. Naruto was sitting in the middle of the room as he stared at the wall, ignoring the sound coming from downstairs. He sat there not moving till his head flinched and he got up from the ground. He focused on the surroundings before he moved to his window and opened it. He took a step back as a figure jumped in and into the center of the room. He crossed his arms as he looked at the figure. Naruto stood there before facing Naruto. Well, Naruto shrugged. Don't get why you ask when you are gonna get the info anyway. I just feel that it's polite to ask regardless. Poof she went up and smoked to reveal Naruto standing in her place. The Naruto that had his arms crossed smirked as he gave a two-finger salute. Poof before he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto paused as he looked through his memories and frowned at how the clone was smacked in the face by Kashina. Glad I prepared for this. He walked up to where the clone was and picked up a seal tag that he had placed on the clone just in case. The tag was something that could allow a shadow clone to take more than just one hit at the cost of chakra. 
the problem is that it takes a lot of chakra from the clone in order to keep it from dispelling, in which the clone can no longer use any chakra if it wants to stay existing. Naruto sighed as he moved over to his bed and sat down before he reached under his mattress, pulled out another tag, and placed it on the wall. Channeling a small amount of chakra into it, he sealed his room off from the people downstairs so they wouldn't be able to sense any of his chakra. Once that was done, he lifted up his arm and pressed his finger on a tag he had on his wrist as another poof was heard. He brought his hands up and caught the Raymond takeout box and scrolls he had gotten from the library. He smiled at what he had before he winced at the cut he had on his left cheek. Today was full of close calls. He reached behind himself and grabbed something that was attached to his back before pulling it off. It was another seal tag that he made to keep his hinge up all day. This was how he had been improving without anyone noticing. And it all started with his first library visit. Flashback, Naruto walked into the library in the hopes that he could learn something that could help him improve his skills. He wasn't sure what he should focus on, but he figured that anything at the moment would help. Due to how Naruko was being taught by those who had so many jutsu that would lead her ahead of the others, he chose to work on some skills by himself. He walked up to the receptionist, who was reading a magazine and spoke to get her attention. Excuse me, can you tell me where the shinobi section is? Mainly the jutsu section for practice. He watched as the woman lowered the magazine before he saw the typical scowl that he had seen on the villagers' faces. He had hoped that he wouldn't get it in a public location like the library, but it turns out that he was wrong. There is no shinobi section in this library. It was her sharp response as she brought her magazine back up to avoid looking at the boy. Naruto frowned at the clear disgust in her voice, but kept his mouth shut. He wanted to snap back he knew from experience that it would only escalate the issue. He continued to try and be polite to the woman despite his anger. But I was informed that there is a section in this specific library for shinobi to check out jutsu gathered to learn. She slammed the magazine to the desk as her sneer got worse. They lied, now leave. Naruto was really tempted to punch her, but that wouldn't help his case. But I, security. A pair of chunin flickered into the lobby to stand behind Naruto. Escort this person, out for disrupting the library occupants. Naruto didn't get a chance to say anything as he was lifted up by the back of his shirt and carried away. He was thrown out onto the street before he heard laughter from the Chunin and villagers who witnessed it. He picked himself off the ground and scowled at the two Chunin as they walked back inside. He grit his teeth as he was pissed at how this always happened to him in any store or facility. Bedding up, he walked away and out of sight from all the villagers. He made it to an alleyway and leaned against the fence as he thought about what he should do now. This was his best chance at learning some jutsu that wouldn't garner too much attention, yet still help him out in the long run, but of course, he wasn't allowed in. I bet if it was Naruko, she would kiss my feet and give me all the jutsu scrolls in there. He growled at how he was sure that would be what would happen till he got an idea. He closed his eyes to make it look like he was still frustrated when in reality he was focusing on his chakra sensing. He couldn't believe his luck. He couldn't sense any of the typical Anbu watching him as they usually did. Whether out on a mission, leaving after seeing that he wouldn't get anything from the library or none were assigned today, he didn't care. But he was in the clear and he brought his hands up into a seal and hinged himself to look like Naruko. He took a few deep breaths to calm down so he wouldn't have a scowl on his face. Once calm, he put on a happy smile and walked out of the alley and towards the library. As he walked back into the library, he was so tempted to scream in anger as he saw that all the people that were laughing at Naruto just seconds ago were now smiling and bowing in respect at Naruko. He couldn't even bite his tongue or cheek as it might dispel the hinge. He walked into the library and saw the receptionist smile and bow to Naruko. Welcome, honorable Namikas, how can I help you? Naruto had to strain to hold the smile. How about slamming your head into the desk, you hypocritical bitch? Keeping that to himself brought out some excitement to keep up the act. I need to train in some elemental jutsu and was told that I can find some scrolls here. The receptionist nodded with glee. Of course, right his way. She walked out from behind her desk and began to lead Naruko to the shinobi jutsu section on the third floor. Once they made it to the section, she turned and gestured to the shelves of scrolls. Here they are. Let me know if you need anything else. Naruko beamed at the woman as she had stars in her eyes at the sight of the wall of scrolls. Thank you very much. She watched as the woman left with a skip in her step. She waited till the woman was out of sight before dropping the smile. Naruko turned to the shelves and looked around for something that would be useful. It took some time going through the selection before something of interest was found. They were simple training scrolls, but they were better than what he was being taught in the academy. Naruto didn't have to worry about Naruko actually coming here and potentially ruining this new way of learning for him since she never would come to the library. Naruko hated reading so she would avoid the library like a plague and she didn't really need to come here for anything. She was being trained by several powerful shinobi with a plethora of jutsu to teach her. 
flashback end, that was how Naruto began to train in secret and how he was able to learn about seals and ways to improve several aspects of his fighting and chakra control. But it still had its problems as he had to make sure that no one saw both him and his sister out at the same time when he was doing this method. That was when he trained his chakra sensing in order to keep his sense open for his sister so that he could avoid her. Leaving the house was actually the easy part, since a lot of times, Naruko would get up so early that no one else was up yet, that is when she isn't spending so much time in the bathroom getting ready, but if she does, he just looks for a moment when no one is looking at the house. Once he has his chance, a clone jumps out the window and uses the hinge to go back inside so that he can leave in his own hinge. The reason for the process was a precaution. If either of their parents stops him in the hinge, whether they caught on or want something from Naruko, the clone can dispel while he is still in his room so that he can't be blamed for it. He had to make sure he was careful so he wasn't caught. One of the close calls today was when he was in the training field and the Anbu began watching him in the middle of it. He had to shift his fighting to be more aligned with how Naruko would actually fight. It wasn't his way of fighting, but it was able to fool the Anbu and have him not question what he was seeing. And they wouldn't suspect him because of the level they believe him to be at. They can't consider him a threat if they don't consider him capable. He opened the takeout box and grabbed the chopsticks as he took a bite of ramen. Once he had some noodles dangling from his mouth, he opened one of the scrolls that he got from the library as he heard a crash below him. Winato sat up as he had fallen after catching Naruko and was able to get a grip on the bag. But thanks to the fall, the back ripped open and the item inside flew into the air. He felt something land on his head and reached up and grabbed it before bringing it in front of him. He saw that it was a piece of cloth before he opened his palm to let it splay out in his hand. It was then he saw what it was. A pair of panties. His eyes widened as he looked up to see his daughter giving him a look of extreme embarrassed anger. You you pervert. Smack. Renato's head turned from the smack as he felt Naruko grab the panties out of his hand and run up the stairs. Naruko had met up with Sakura and Ino during her time out and they went shopping for Naruko's new bra and panties. After that, she spent the rest of the day with them, with a small bit of training with the girls in one of the training fields on the other side of the village from Naruto. Not that she knew that. But Minato's head turned from the smack, he saw the angered look that Kishina was giving him. He began to sweat at the side of her hair, gaining the appearance of the Kaiubi's nine tails. He began to crawl backward away from her as he tried to defend himself. Now, Kishina, you know it was an accident. Kishina cracked her knuckles as her eyes flashed white. I didn't know you picked something like that up from your sensei. I'm going to have to beat it out of you for the sake of our family. Screams could be heard from the household, but no one was willing to see what it was since the sound of something rampaging scared them away. Winato was nursing a hurt face as the family was at the table eating the dinner that Kishina made. Naruko's embarrassment had died down, but she was doing her best to humph away every time her father looked at her. Kishina had a bright smile on her face as she piled on the food on her plate. Naruko looked at her family in order to get back to the present till she saw the empty seat that was next to Kishina. Hey, mom, where's Naruto? Kishina paused in her serving before she frowned. Naruto did something unacceptable and he isn't allowed to eat today. Naruko tilted her head. What did he do? Why isn't he allowed to eat? Kishina's mood continued to drop. You don't need to know it, Naruko. But. Slam. Naruko jumped as Kishina slammed her hand on the table. The woman gave Naruko a hard look. You don't need to know it, Naruko, so drop it. Naruko nodded before she continued eating. She looked to her father to see that he had gained a stern look on his face and knew that she shouldn't bring it up. She looked up as she wondered what it was that Naruto did, but if it was so bad that it made mom and dad mad, she figured he deserved it. She looked back at her mother and saw the amount she had. Hey, how come you get to eat more? Kashina smirked at her daughter. Because I am the one serving it. No fair. Dim more. Er poof, maybe I ate too much. Naruto was sitting on his bed with a satisfied smile on his face as he enjoyed the Ichiraku Raymond he got. So far, today was a good day of training, and he had no worries about the graduation exam. He looked at the open scroll in his right hand as he mentally thanked the woman at the library for her help. Elsewhere, the receptionist from the library was coming out of her shower as she felt refreshed after the long day. She ran her hand down her chest as she made her way to the full body mirror she had in the corner so she could start to get dry. When she stood in front of the mirror, she froze at the sight. Blue hair, green skin. Her eyes widened as she lifted her hand to her face in disbelief at what she saw. Naruto smirked as he wished he could see her reaction when she sees his thanks. Getting back to his task, he held his left hand up next to his head. He read the instructions and knew that this jutsu would be helpful. Mystic Palm Jutsu. His hand gained a green glow as he pressed it on his cut cheek. He had to practice and the best target was himself. Naruto put his final kunai into his kunai pouch before he put it on his leg. He couldn't help but feel a bit liberated as he knew that he would be getting out of that academy. 
sure, it was only four years, but when those four years had him sit through Ruka's tortuous lectures and the poor teaching of the instructors, anyone would want to be out of that. He did better on his own than he did at the academy, but if he had to make one positive about being there, it was a time when the Anbu tended not to watch if he sneezed to the right instead of the left. Seriously, what was with his father wanting to make sure that he didn't do anything out of what was expected? Hell, it got even worse in the last two and a half months, with a man doubling the normal amount of eyes on him. He finished up getting his gear ready before he grabbed the spares, moved over to the corner of the room, and pulled out a plank from the floor. He put the extras in the little space under the floorboards. Once those were hidden, he stood up and smirked as he was ready to graduate and get the freedom that comes with becoming an adult. At least in the eyes of the shinobi ranks. He had plans after he graduated, but before that, he still had one last trial to get through. He left his room and walked down the stairs. As he was descending, he heard some cheering from the first floor. His mood dropped as he heard his sister boasting about how she was going to take the graduation tests by storm. He let out a sigh as he realized that he was so into his own excitement that he drowned out the world around him. Not a good thing to do if I want to live as a shinobi. Naruko was bouncing in her seat as she was ready to head off to the academy to get to the graduation test. Calm down, Naruko. The academy isn't going to disappear before you head over there. Kishina smiled at how excited her daughter was. Minato chuckled as he walked up to stand next to his wife. If I recall, you were just as excited during your own graduation. You were so excited that your verbal tick kept coming out in every one of your sentences. He almost immediately regretted saying anything when he felt his wife's unique aura of death aimed at him. The man held his hands up in surrender as he was not ready to die just yet. He would like to live a few more decades. Aruko giggled at the sight of her father being scolded. Once her little giggle fit was over, she looked over to the wall clock to see that it was actually time for her to head over to the academy. She jumped up and pumped her fist. It's time. She was about to head out the door to run full speed, only to stop when Minato placed a gentle hand on her shoulder. Baruko, before you go, we want to tell you something. Baruko looked up to her father with a tilt of her head. Ashina walked up to her and knelt down. We want you to do your best while at the graduation test. Remember, just because it is a test, it doesn't mean that you should take it lightly. Give it your absolute all. Do you understand? Baruko nodded so hard that her pigtails almost flipped. You got it. Minato smiled as he brought something else up. Also, when you graduate, we have a surprise for you. Baruko turned to look at Minato with stars in her eyes. Ooh, what is it? What is it? The adults chuckled before Kashina placed a hand on her daughter's head. You will find out when you get back. Naruko whined as she was now super curious about what it was that her parents were going to surprise her with. She wasn't the only one. Naruto was curious about what it might be that his parents planned on giving Naruko, but for now, he chose to let it go, since he would find out when she boasted about it later on. He continued down the stairs and made his way to the door. Minato noticed him and eyed the boy as he walked toward the door. He wasn't the only one as Kashina did the same. Hey Naruto. Naruto paused and looked over his shoulder at Naruko with a raised eyebrow. Naruko gained a cheeky smirk as she put her hands on her hips as she proudly asked. Guess what mom and dad said to me? Not giving him the chance to actually say anything, she continued. He said that he is going to teach me his signature move when I graduate the exam. Naruto rolled his eyes as he was in earshot when their father said he would give her something. And based on the words he used, it wasn't even that. All they said was that they had a surprise to give when she came back. If he had to guess, he figured it might have been some custom weapon or a new outfit for her to use, but that was all just a guess. Not wanting to encourage her bragging, he nodded. Good for you. He opened the door and left before she even had a chance to respond. Naruko didn't like the fact that he had left without her and ran toward the door. Hey, no fair. She stopped at the door and looked back at her parents. Bye mom, bye dad. She opened the door and ran after her brother so that she wouldn't lose. Minato had a grim look on his face as Kashina grew worried. She looked at her husband and asked. What are we going to do? As things are, he might, don't worry. Things will work out, I know it. As long as we are careful, nothing can go wrong. Ashina nodded before she turned to the door with an angry expression. They better. Naruto was now sitting in his seat as he waited for the class to start. He was bouncing his leg up and down in impatience. Why is it that when you are at the last stretch of things, it always seems to slow down to the point of standing still? His eyes roamed the classroom, and he could almost think of it as being nostalgic, if it weren't for the fact that his time in the academy did nothing for his growth and potential. Sure he can say that he learned about the history of the villages, shinobi, and the many times the second daimyo fell off his chair, real lesson by the way, but when it came to the practical stuff, he was practically self-taught. Naturally, with how he kept things to himself, he didn't really know how he fared against the other students, but he was pretty sure he was nowhere near the dead last. 
Naruko was talking with Ino and Sakura as they were anticipating the arrival of Iruka and Mizuki so they could get to the exams. Man, why do they have to take so long to get here? They should come early so we can graduate already. Ino shook her head as she smiled at her friend. Easy, Naruko, by the end of the day, you will have that headband and you can be happy about it all you want. Naruko hugged Ino as she cried crocodile tears. Ino don't fail. How else are we going to go on missions if you don't graduate with me? She rubbed her cheek against the Yamanaka, who was grumbling about Naruko being too clingy. Sakura giggled as she patted Naruko on the shoulder. From all the training we did, I don't think any of us are going to fail. She was going to continue till she noticed that someone was missing. Either of you see Hinata. She's usually the first one here. Ino pushed Naruko off before shrugging. I haven't seen her, but I wouldn't worry about her since I'm sure she'll show up. She's been just as excited about it as the rest of us, she just knows how to hide it better. It was at that moment that the female Hayuga walked into the room, getting everyone's attention. Hinata felt a little self-conscious due to her new appearance. She was now wearing a short-sleeved light violet hooded jacket that she had halfway zipped up over a black shirt. On her arms were black greaves and fingerless gloves that had metal plating over them. For her lower half, she had a short dark gray skirt over black shorts. For her legs, she wore toeless boots with greaves over her calves and her kunai pouch around her right calf. Hinata blushed at the attention she was given and immediately moved over to her friends. Ino gave an impressed whistle as she looked at Hinata's new attire. Nice look, Hinata. I didn't know you had that kind of clothing. Hinata brought up her hood as she softly spoke. These were a gift for my graduation day and I was too embarrassed to wear them, that's why it took me a while to arrive. Sakura had a small laugh at how timid Hinata can be at some of the simplest things. Don't worry about it, Hinata, you look good in your new outfit. Hinata nodded in gratitude as she sat in her seat and waited for the instructors to arrive. Naruto had noticed her new outfit and thought about adding bracers himself, but that would be something for later, since much to his bitter pleasure, Haruka and Mizuki walked in. Haruka moved to stand in front of his desk as he spoke to the entire class. He was surprised to see that they all stopped talking the moment he walked in, but he could figure that it was due to how they wanted to get things started. He was a little disappointed that he wouldn't be able to use his signature jutsu to get them to be quiet one more time, but he guessed that he should just be glad that most of them would graduate. Alright, everyone, I'm going to tell you what the exam will be before we begin. The first part will be a written exam that goes over what you have learned from my lectures. You will have one hour to complete it and we will watch to make sure you don't cheat. Afterward, we will have you perform the three academy jutsu so we know you have the basic jutsu all shinobi have. Finally, we will head outside in order to have matches. Usually, we would have you fight either Mizuki or me, so we can evaluate your ability in combat, but we will have you fight each other, so that we can get things moving. This will also allow you to show off any extra jutsu you have, in order to gain extra credit. He looked at Mizuki and nodded. The silver-haired Chunin began to pass out the paper's face down in front of all of them. Naruto noticed the Chunin channel chakra into the paper he put in front of him and already figured that there was a Jinjutsu on it. He watched as the man left and continued to pass the papers out. He narrowed his eyes at the man, but knew that he couldn't just undo the Jinjutsu, since he didn't want to bring attention to himself. His eyes shifted to the guy sitting next to him and smirked as he saw the guy looking somewhere else, whispering to another student. He waited for a moment when the two were not looking at the paper and immediately switched his paper with the guys. Since they were all face down, there was no sign of anything being wrong. Once they all had the test, Haruka nodded. Alright, everyone, you can begin your exam now. Everyone flipped their exams over and began to do their test. Naruto saw the questions and knew he would be able to get a decent score. He had studied as much as he could in order to pass it, so he wasn't worried. His eyes shifted to the guy next to him and saw that the paper was blank on both sides. Sorry, but I'm not taking the chance. A student looked over the paper and wasn't sure if this was intentional or not. He sat there wondering about it for a few minutes before he realized that others were actually writing answers. He looked at his paper once more before he raised his hand to ask the instructor about his test. Naruto smirked when he saw Mizuki gain a confused look when the man saw what the problem was. Naruto felt that he had done well on the test, since a lot of the questions he remembered from reading up on some of the actual history of Shinobi. There were some questions that were extended information from Aruka's lecture, so unless someone went to read more about the history, there was no way they would know. He did it only because he was kicked out of the room a few times so he didn't get the lecture. But he knew he needed to know it, so it was one of the things he spent his time disguised as Naruko. Now, the students were in the auditorium so that they could show off their ability to use the three basic jutsu. Naruto was leaning on the wall in the hallway as he waited for his turn. Despite how he was on his own, his mind went over how he was going to do this. I could use the shadow clone jutsu, but I don't know if I want to show off that much. Maybe I can just overdo the normal clone jutsu. 
I mean, all I need to do to make that work is make a lot of clones. He focused on his chakra sensing and was able to tell that there was a couple of Anbu nearby. He didn't know if they were here to report about the genin that were graduating or if they were here just for him, but either way, it made things harder for him to show off a bit since he did not want his father to realize his talents. The man was already on the brink of either throwing him out of the house or outright killing him as a potential threat to their so-called chosen one, he was brought out of his thoughts when Aruka came out of the auditorium and called for the next student. Aruko Namikas. The female Namikas stopped talking with Ino and Sakura, the pin cat already having her turn, and gave a victory sign to her friends as she headed toward the instructor. She noticed her brother watching her as she went in and gave him a condescending smirk with a two-fingered salute. Naruto's mood soured at the sight. Why the hell does she always think we are in the middle of a contest that she is winning? He took a breath as he didn't want her I'm so much better than you and your worthless attitude to get to him. He was really getting tired of that attitude from everyone. His need to get them all to stop was pushing him to show off a little more than just hold back enough to get the passing grade, but he calmed himself as he didn't need the Anbu to rat him out. I want to hurry up and get this over with. I'm so close. Just one more day. Aruko finished doing the Kawarimi and Henge and was given top marks for how well she was able to use them. Her mother had made sure that she was able to get the Henge perfect so that she would get the best score for it. Aruko smiled as he put the score for the Jutsu that was performed. Well done, Naruko, now can you please perform the clone jutsu for us? The number of clones does not matter, but they need to be stable clones that are hard to distinguish from you. Naruko was smiling wide as she put her hands into a single hand sign. Shadow clone jutsu. In multiple puffs of smoke, 20 shadow clones appeared around her, all of them smirking at the instructors who went slack-jawed at the sight. Azuki shook himself out of his shock before he tapped Naruko on the shoulder. You can't sit there being shocked the rest of the day, Naruko. Might as well pass her already so we can get a move on. Naruka shook his head before giving a bright smile. Well done, Naruko, you are the only one that has done the shadow clone jutsu in your whole class. He wrote a high mark for Naruko's sheet as he continued. I look forward to seeing how well you do in your Kinoichi career. Naruko beamed at the praise as she was glad that she was able to surprise the teachers with her skills. She gave a big smile at Naruka. You're gonna be surprised with what I can bring to the table. She began to run toward the door but paused when she got to the door. She looked back at the teachers with a solemn look. Go easy on my brother, will you? Aruka and Mizuki looked at each other before giving the girl an inquisitive look. Aruko shrugged before continuing. I know that he doesn't have a chance in passing, but the least you can do is let him off gently. Maybe it will wake him up to how useless he is in being a shinobi. Aruka let out a sigh as he looked at his clipboard. We'll be as fair with him as we have been throughout his time in the academy. Aruko nodded as she opened the door and went to join her friends. She was surprised that Naruto didn't even wait for his name to be called and was walking into the room. She shook her head with a sigh. Faster he hears the facts, the faster he can just stop being pathetic. Naruko looked up a little surprised to see Naruto walk in already. Honestly, he was not enthused by this one and was fine with holding it off a few minutes more, but he supposed that failing the kid sooner would be better than holding it off. We didn't call for you yet, Naruto, but I suppose the faster we get this over with, the faster we can move on with our day. Naruto didn't give any indication that he was concerned about what they said as he stood in front of the two instructors. I agree. The answer caused a raised eyebrow from both of them. Usually, he didn't respond in such a manner at all, but they chose to shrug it off. Azuki brought up his clipboard and already wrote down failed on the three jutsu. Not once had he shown that he could do any of them efficiently and he figured that it would save him time. His mind went to what he planned on doing later and how easy it was going to be to manipulate the boy into stealing the scroll. And whether or not the plan succeeds or fails, the boy would be dead either way. Naruka clicked his pen as he looked at the boy, uninterested. All right, Naruto, you are to show us the three academy jutsu so. Before Naruka could finish, Naruto used the henge to transform into Hiruzen Saratobi in full battle armor and staff, before he used the clone jutsu to create 30 clones of Hiruzen, and then used the Kawarimi to switch places with a chair that was set up at the side. The reason he turned into Hiruzen Saratobi was due to how there was no one alive of high standing that he wanted to turn into. He found out about the third Hokage during one of his library visits and was able to find a full body picture of the old man. He didn't know how the man would have acted or even what he sounded like, but what the instructors were looking for was an illusion that could pass off as the person, not how well they could impersonate said person. Iruka was shocked at how quickly the boy used all three of the jutsus, with little to no sign of him channeling his chakra. He had never seen the boy practice the jutsu at all during his time at the academy, and with how practice went, Naruto had never shown any progress. He was brought out of his shock when Naruto, still in Hiruzen's form, walked back to his place. Naruto dispelled the henge and asked. Well. How was that? Naruka shook his head before he opened his mouth. 
Uh, great, I pass. Naruto walked away as he smirked at how shocked he made the two. Or rather, how shocked he made Aruka, well how pissed off he made Mizuki. Mizuki was baring his teeth in an expression of pure fury. This ruined things for him, as the jutsu portion of the exam took up a majority of the grades. And with how well Naruto did, there was a possibility that he could pass. Mizuki soon calmed himself as he knew the next part of the exam would be what guaranteed the brat to fail. Naruto walked out of the room and moved to the side to avoid anyone's view. Well, how did you do? The condescending voice stopped him in his steps, and he looked over his shoulder to see Kiba looking at him, as if he was ready to make fun of him. He rolled his eyes and kept going. Kiba let out a chuckle. Hey, come on, it's not the end of the world if you fail the fastest in the academy. Maybe you can pass in a few more years. Maybe I can train you when I become a jonin. Naruto took a breath as he always found Kiba's alpha attitude annoying. He was sure that when they graduated, he wouldn't have to deal with Kiba's attitude ever again. He decided to leave the room, not caring about anyone else's results. Kiba shrugged as he walked away. Guess, he doesn't want to hear anyone else graduate. Hidden in the shadows was the Anbu that was set up to watch the boy and made a mental note about how fast he was able to do the jutsus needed. She was curious though, since she had never seen him practice at all during her time observing the boy. She was even more interested now in how well he did in the final portion of the exam. Lenato was in his office looking over some papers that were brought to him by his secretary. He was looking over some of the budgets of the East Side marketplace, but his mind was not entirely on it. He was thinking about how the students at the academy were in the middle of the graduation exam. He smiled at how he knew his daughter was going to do. He had trained her to the best of his abilities, and the girl could be a low tune in if not mid, at her normal powers. Should she use Kyubi's power, Jonan level at least. There was then a knock on the door, and Minato looked up from his papers and responded. Enter. The door opened to reveal an old man who had most of his face and right arm wrapped in bandages. Minato grew serious at the sight of the man. Danzo, to what do I owe this visit? There was a slight bite to his voice, but not enough for it to be noticeable, at least to those not paying attention. Danzo is one of the village elders who can be considered an advisor to the Hokage, however, he is also considered the biggest issue. Especially since Danzo has his own shinobi force that is loyal to only him. Danzo walked up to stand in front of the Hokage's desk before he spoke. I know that you are busy at the moment, but I wish to bring up my previous request. Lenato gave the man a hard stare as he steepled his fingers. And my answer will remain the same. Danzo frowned at the answer. He knew that this would be the result, but he still had to try and get what he wanted. Sir, I understand your apprehension with this, but you must understand that under my tutelage, results are sure to be achieved. Your results are not something I am looking forward to. Your root agents have never proven to me that they are of use, and since I ask you to disband them, there is no reason for me to allow anyone to work under you. And yet his potential is obviously wasted in the academy. And after today, should he fail, he will still not be put in your care. Anzo tightened his grip on his cane. Why are you so adamant in not allowing your son to work with me? I know that he is subpar in most of the shinobi arts. This is clearly telling us that the system is not fit for what he could become. That is not a fault of the system, it is the fault of the student. He has no talent in learning these things, and if that is what is to become of him, then so be it. Naruto will not become an agent of your program. The last remnants of Rude is all I'll allow, but I will not give you any more resources than you have already stolen from Kanoha. Anzo huffed in agitation as he turned around and chose to leave. Your son could very well be a good bodyguard for your daughter, yet it seems that you do not want him to improve at all. Lenato didn't lose his stoic expression. Talent brought up by you is questionable. Your agents were loyal to you, not Kanoha. This isn't something the village needs. The foundation of the village is community and family, not a weapon that is to be used by one person. Anzo looked over his shoulder. A weapon is what the village needs in order to maintain its standing. Being peaceful can only bring about chaos. He left the room as it was clear he was not getting anywhere with this. As he walked into the hallway, he thought about how far his plans pertaining to the son of the Hokage had gotten. Years ago, he believed that if the children of the Hokage were trained properly, they could be used as weapons to subjugate the other villages and force their loyalty. He had wanted to take them into his program so that they could be properly trained in such a mindset. Yet he had to hold off on his acquisition of them, as he believed that learning from their parents would allow them to gain power he could not bring out. However, in hindsight, that might have been his mistake as it seems that Naruko had become too high profile. He couldn't take her with him without getting more eyes on him. Yet the son was not as well known as the daughter. He figured he could use this as a way to sway the boy to his side, and so he had chosen to make a situation to let the boy choose to join him. By using some Ichiha that were on the low end in status, he would manipulate the civilians into having some animosity toward the boy. By planting slight suggestions into the minds of people, they would blame the boy for the tragedy that happened the day of their birth. 
what came as a surprise for the old man was that there were already such things that were in the minds of the people. Thanks to the report of the Achiha he had employed, the people already blamed Naruto for that incident, like it was his birth that summoned the creature. What the Achiha did was just cause the animosity to become hostile. Another surprise was that the Hokage didn't seem to even be concerned about it, but that was of little concern for him. And yet, the man would still not give the boy to the old man, for some reason or another. He would have used Shisui's eye to manipulate the Hokage into giving the boy away, but if he did, he would not be able to use it again for many years to come. He can be patient, the boy would be the best tool once trained to obey the old man. Having a shinobi that has Uzumaki blood would be a boon in many different ways. As for the Ashihas that worked with Danzo in this little scheme, it was easy to dispose of them, as he had access to missions given out to the shinobi. All Danzo needed to do was send a team of his root agents to follow the Ichihas and kill them before they could return. It was thanks to this that he was able to achieve a few Sharingan eyes for his own personal project. Danzo's mind went to whether he should meet up with the boy after the academy ends to extend an invitation. Based on the records, the boy might be eager to get some teaching that cannot be achieved while in the academy. Meanwhile, back in the Hokage office, Minato was able to calm himself down at the sight of Danzo. He didn't trust the man at all as it was clear that the elder had an agenda that benefited himself and not Kanoha. The request for his son was something that Danzo had been bringing up for some time now, and part of him would have gone with the notion if it wasn't for the fact that he doesn't trust Danzo at all. Naruto being taken away and trained to protect Naruko was a tempting offer, but Danzo has no interest in anything other than oppressing the other villages into submission. This is the kind of action that would breed enemies on many different sides. And even if Naruto was trained to obey orders, it would not be the Hokages it would be Danzo, and with how Danzo had wanted the Hokage seed ever since Hiruzen had been Hokage, he would not put it against the man if he trained Naruto to kill him. If he were to die, there would be less protection for Naruko, and it could very well lead to fulfilling the dark side of the prophecy. The best thing he could do was to keep Naruto under his thumb and make sure that he gained no improvement in any way. As for Danzo, the only reason he kept the man within the Elder Council is due to the service the man did in his time, and the old man has not done anything directly against him. Naruto was twitching in anticipation with his finger taping on his crossed arms and his foot tapping the ground. He had to wait through all the fights that the previous students went through. Even his sister had already gone as she went up against Hinata. He could say that Hayuga girl did alright in the match, but Naruko just had more powerful techniques and countermeasures against Hinata's fighting style. The roster was random, so Naruto had no idea when he would go. He just wanted to fight so he could finally be done with this. He watched as another civilian match finished, and he would have to give props to Kisuk. The guy used a shuriken as a block and injured his opponent's hand. That was the main factor that won him the match. These matches weren't just for Tojutsu, these were meant to see how well you do in a fight in general. This meant that Jutsu, weapons, and tactics were examined. He was confident in his abilities, but this was also the first time he would be fighting someone other than himself. Well without having to throw the match. Iruka wrote down some notes about the performance of the two and smiled. Congratulations, you two, you both did splendid in your match. Saku, you need to be ready for the unexpected. Enemy shinobi aren't going to be as sportsmanlike when you are out in the field. With your scores from the written exam and how well you were able to do the academy jutsus he gestured toward the table that had a set of headbands laid out in an orderly fashion. I am proud to say that you are now shinobi of Konoha. Please pick up your headband and wait on the side for your classmates. The kids nodded as they both moved to pick up their headbands. There were sets of headbands for the kids to pick. One was the standard blue cloth, another was black, one was with a short cloth meant for wrapping around arms or legs, one was with a longer cloth for belts or to just have a long tassel, and the last was the metal plate with cloth of the same size so it can be attached to another piece of clothing they shinobi would like. Once they got their pick, they moved over to their friends and waited for the whole thing to be over so they could celebrate with their families. Aruka nodded before he looked down at his clipboard and frowned at one of the names on it. Shifting his eyes over the clipboard, he saw Naruto waiting for his turn. He normally would have gotten the boy over with since previously, he would be matched up with Naruko. The girl however had already gone as it was suggested to them that the girl should have a tougher opponent so she could show off how well she was against a better student. Now the boy could be paired up with another student and it could potentially go either way. Not to mention that Naruto had shown that he was well versed in the academy jutsu which they thought to be impossible. Now Ruka was worried that the boy might actually succeed. Azuki was having similar thoughts as he was hoping that the setup would be the same as always with Naruko beating Naruto. But Naruko already went. He looked at the remaining students and most of them were civilians. He needed the brat to fail in this so that it would give him the chance he needed. He smirked to himself as he saw one of the top Tajutsu fighters in the class. He wasn't the best, but he sure as hell was a cut above the rest. He looked up and called them up. 
Naruto Namikas and Kiba and Yuzuka, you two are up next. Wahoo. This is gonna be fun and easy. Kiba cheered as he jumped off the ground and made his way to the starting point. Halfway there, he picked up Akamaru from his head and put him on the ground. I'm not gonna need any help with this one, buddy, and I'm gonna have some fun with this one. Akamaru whined before he sat down and barked at his partner, accepting what Kiba said. Naruto looked at Kiba and figured he could deal with this. I at least know how he fights so I can work around it. I better make this work. He walked toward the starting point as he heard some of the other kids talk. Dead kid walking. Five Rio says Kiba beats him within four minutes. Hen says it's within three. Naruto didn't care about their little bets. He was gonna put on a show that will get him his headband and he can finally be done with it all. Naruko watched as her brother walked toward Kiba and called out. Try not to embarrass yourself out there. Naruto stopped mid-step when he heard his sister say that and his lips curled up in a silent growl. He took a breath and was able to calm himself down before he made it to his spot. Naruko looked at the two and nodded as he said. Okay, just in case you didn't pay attention to what will be examined. This will evaluate your skills in tojutsu, combat prowess, and ability to adapt. You are allowed to use anything at your disposal, but I will intervene if it starts to get out of hand, understood. Kiba cracked his knuckles as he was ready to get this started. Naruto nodded as he didn't take his eyes off Kiba. Naruka saw that they heard him and finished up. Alright, make the unison sign before we begin. Naruto deadpanned at this little bit he forgot about but complied. He brought his hand up with his two fingers extended. Kiba shrugged as he did the same. The two made the sign before they took a step back. Naruka nodded before he brought his hand up and swung it downward. Begin. Kiba was the first to make a move as he charged at Naruto. Naruto shifted his foot back, brought his arms up, and waited for the first attack. He saw Kiba throw a punch to his face and moved his arm to block the hit. He winced when the fist hit his wrist but chose to ignore it as he had to block a haymaker. He shifted side to side as Kiba threw punch after punch at his face, as if that was the only target that Naruto had on him. Naruto began to take steps back as he weaved back and forth from hits he could dodge and brought up his arms to block any that he couldn't. Kiba's fighting style was focused more on his fists and claw-like nails. He never uses his feet so Naruto didn't have to worry about any kicks or leg sweeps. Everyone watched as Kiba assaulted Naruto with relentless vigor, all the while, the blonde did nothing but defend. Naruko was a little surprised that Naruto was able to defend against any of Kiba's attacks. She assumed that he would have already been hit enough to lose, yet, here he was prolonging the loss. She was still waiting for him to lose as she saw that he was already losing his footing and was hit in the face by Kiba. Naruto's head turned with a hit from Kiba but kept his defense up as he continued to block the attacks. But as time continued, one hit became two, two became five, and his defense was starting to falter. As another punch threw his head back, he used this as a way to counterattack as he brought his forehead forward and slammed it into Kiba's face. Arg. Kiba was stunned by the counter and held his head in pain from the attack. He growled as he thought that the dead last of the class should not have been able to do that. In retaliation, he glared at Naruto before he charged once more, this time throwing all his strength into his attacks. Naruto was unable to bring up his defense in time and was struck by every attack that Kiba threw. He tried to throw his own attacks and was able to get a few hits in, but Kiba seemed to have gone feral and brushed off the bruises. Kiba landed a solid uppercut into Naruto's solar plexus before he threw a hard punch into the side of Naruto's face. Naruto spun from the force of the hit before he stopped, facing Kiba, and fell face first at Kiba's feet. The other students cheered for Kiba for beating the dead last. Kiba was breathing heavily before he smirked at the fallen blonde. Naruka though was throwing as Naruto had cleared the required time limit that allowed students to get a middling score. With the test score the blonde achieved in the written exam and his performance in the jutsu portion, he had no other choice than to pass him. He was about to give a statement that said that they both passed, but Mizuki interrupted him. It looks like he is still conscious. This match is until one of you is unconscious or we say it is over. This match is still ongoing. He knew that he could call it off now, but he enjoyed seeing the blonde get beaten by the Inuzuka. Kiba looked at Naruto and couldn't help but chuckle. Damn, I did a number on you. But I guess being the dead last it's only a given that you would eat dirt after I wail on you. Naruto was groaning as his face was scrunched up in pain after being assaulted by Kiba. S you ain't gonna be worth anything other than dirt. Instantly, his twitching stopped and his wince disappeared, replaced with anger as he was getting tired of everyone looking down on him. Screw it. You come back music, I chose the doom music. Naruto pushed himself off the ground before he was standing tall and gave a death glare to Kiba. Go to hell. He instantly threw a smoke bomb on the ground, causing a large plume of smoke to envelop the audience, Kiba, and himself. Kiba covered his face with his arms to guard from the smoke. What the hell. He tried to look around for any sign of Naruto, but he was unable to see anything. He was about to sniff the air in order to track his scent, but felt a fist bury into his stomach, halting that action. 
He hunched over in pain before another fist was brought up to his chin, one strong enough to throw him into the air. Before he could be sent flying, a hand grabbed his ankle and brought him back down, slamming into the ground. He coughed up some blood before something yanked him up by his jacket and he was suddenly assaulted by a flurry of punches that were throwing his head in every direction. Regaining his senses, he stepped back in order to get some room, but didn't expect something metallic to wrap around his neck and yank his head back. A foot slammed into his back, causing him to bend backward even more. He felt the thing around his neck slacken again before it pulled his head forward and down, right into Naruto's knee. The crack made Kiba realize that his nose was broken and he wouldn't be able to track down where Naruto was. He was relieved when the thing around his neck disappeared, but he didn't have much time to enjoy it as he felt his legs get sepped from under him. On reflex, he bent his arms back before gripping the ground and somersaulting away. Gibba was able to land a few feet away but was kicked in the side from behind. He swung his fist back, trying to hit Naruto, but only felt air. Where are you? He didn't notice Naruto's face appearing over his left shoulder. Here. Naruto smirked at the shock that came from Kiba as he grabbed the Inuzuka's throat, stifling any sound he could make, and pulled hard enough to get him off his feet. He then slammed Kiba into the ground. Kiba let out a yelp of pain, as the force was much more than he thought the blonde could muster. He opened his eyes and saw Naruto pull out a set of kunai. What the hell? He shut his eyes as he saw Naruto bring them down. Meanwhile, the other students were wondering what was going on in the smoke screen. They were able to hear some fighting happening inside the smoke, but that was all. They knew the fight was still going as they could hear fists impacting flesh, but that was all. They were wondering if Naruto had made a comeback using the smokescreen, but they figured the Kiba would still have the upper hand, since the Inuzuka could still use his enhanced olfactory sense to find the blonde. After a few minutes of not being able to see anything, Hinata chose to activate her Dejutsu to see how the fight was going. Her gasp caught the attention of the others as they wondered what the girl saw. Naruko tapped Hinata's shoulder and asked. What is it? What can you see? Before Hinata could say anything, another student spoke up. Hey, the smoke's clearing. Everyone looked at the smoke and saw that it was indeed thinning out. They saw a figure standing over another, and they thought that it was Kiba standing over a beat Naruto, but when it cleared, they were surprised to see that it was the opposite. Naruto was standing over a beaten Kiba, and Kiba was pinned to the ground by ninja wires that were held in place by some kunai. Naruto himself didn't even look injured. It was like the attacks he took earlier never happened. Naruto looked over to Aruka with a hard stare. Are you gonna stand there or are you gonna call it? Aruka frowned at the sight and he did not want to call the match. Kiba is still conscious and has yet to surrender. Naruto's frown deepened before he knelt down and brought out another kunai and brought it to Kiba's neck. He looked up at Aruka as Kiba leaned away from the kunai. How about now? Aruka was now glaring at Naruto at this action. Before he could say anything, he was interrupted. Look, I'm just showing you that I won the match. He can't get up and I have him at my mercy. No matter how you see it, he lost. Aruka growled as his grip tightened on the clipboard. Fine. Naruto took that as confirmation and he pulled his kunai away. He brought his hand to one of his kunai as he whispered out. How's that for a beatdown? This was a little jab toward Kiba as the Inuzuka usually called the fights between Naruto and Naruko a one-sided beatdown. He yanked the kunai, causing the others to come out of the ground before he grabbed them midair. Figuring that he was finally done here, he walked over to the table that had the headbands to grab one and leave. Naruka called out at the boy. Hey wait, I didn't say. I know I did decently on the written exam, I was able to do all three academy jutsu, and I won the match, is there a reason I shouldn't have graduated? Naruka tried to think of anything that would help him, but he was unable to do so. Naruto smirked at the teacher before he grabbed a headband that had long black cloth before he began to walk away from the others. I'm finally done with this place. Now I can start with the other place. Azuki was gritting his teeth so hard that one could hear them crack. Shit. That little shit wasn't supposed to graduate. He was glaring daggers at Naruto's back and was wishing he could attack the boy right here and now, but he couldn't. His mind went over to how he could be able to get the scroll till he came up with a good workaround. You'll get yours soon, you brat. The students were also shocked at the sight of Naruto winning the match. A majority of them didn't think he would be able to graduate, while the remaining didn't care about it. The one who was shocked the most was Naruko. She watched her brother leave, but still couldn't figure it out. How did he win? She had been fighting him all this time and not once had he ever shown the skill that would be able to win against Kiba. She wanted to go after him and ask what he did, but Ino asked her a question. He must have used the smokescreen in order to do something to win. You got any idea what he did, Naruko? Naruko looked to Ino before shrugging. No, but he must have done something underhanded in order to win. He never had that kind of skill so it doesn't make any sense. Her mind kept thinking about the fight, and she was now determined to figure out how he was able to beat Kiba, one of the best fighters in the class. 
not the best but still pretty good. Naruko wasn't the only one who was curious about it as the Anbu watched the boy leave. Smokescreen hit his moves and tactics, but it is clear that he is far better than what we know. I should begin writing my report for the Hokage so he can read it tomorrow. The Anbu jumped away to follow the boy and keep track of this new development. Hiba had gotten up and was wiping his face with his sleeve to get some of the blood off him. Akamaru was at his feet, rubbing his head on his partner's leg in concern. Hiba looked at his partner and gave a crooked smile. I'm fine, pal, he just got me by surprise. He brought his hand up to his neck and rubbed it. The hell did he use around my neck? Felt like a damn chain, but he doesn't have anything like that on him, he moved to the table to get his own headband as he was told he graduated. I'll beat him next time. Later, Naruto was in his room as he held the headband in his hand. He finally got this piece of metal that granted him privileges that were held from him. He still knew that things would be difficult for him as his father most likely would do something to hinder him, but right now, this piece of metal will be just what he needs to go with the next part of what he had planned when he did graduate. He was also going to remember the look of fury on Aruka and Mizuki's faces from now on. He looked out his window when he sensed Naruko's chakra approaching. He frowned as he had a feeling that she might bring up the fact that he beat Kiba to his parents. He was sure that they didn't know just yet, since neither Minato nor Kashina had interrogated him yet. The two adults were downstairs as they were excited to hear Naruko brag about graduating. Naruto figured that they assumed that he failed as he only walked in and headed to his room. He made sure to hide the headband in his jacket to keep this from them. He heard the door open and there was a cheer from the two adults. Congratulations on graduating. Naruko smiled as she jumped into her parents' arms as she saw the sign above them that said congratulations. The three laughed at this happy moment with confetti floating around them. Minato and Kashina let their daughter go as they looked at the headband she had on her forehead. Minato ruffled her hair with a proud smile on his face. I knew you would be able to do it. Now you have the chance to get even stronger when you get your Jonin sensei. Kashina nodded before she gave Minato a hard look. You better make sure that he is on time on the day, or else I will drag him in the dirt to the academy so he is on time. Minato chuckled sheepishly as he knew about Kakashi's acquired habit. I'll make sure. Naruko giggled as she already knew about Kakashi's tendencies and was almost looking forward to seeing her mother drag the man into the classroom before being tossed in. Her mind then went to the other member of the family, and she was curious to ask if her parents had trained Naruto in any way for the graduation exam. Despite how that was unlikely since they had trained her all the time they could, but they could have made a shadow clone in order to train him. Hey, guys. Ashina clapped her hands as she remembered what they were supposed to do when Naruko came back from the academy. The girl may have arrived later than they would have thought she would, but she was here, and the matriarch was excited to give the girl the surprise. Oh, that's right, we had a surprise for you when you came back. Naruko paused at that and remembered that her parents had told her that they would give her a surprise when she came back. Her apprehension slowly dissipated, and she felt excitement take over as she was eager to get a surprise. Ooh oh, what is it? She began to bounce around as she really wanted to know what it was. Minato chuckled at how happy his daughter was acting. He placed his hand on her shoulder to get her to hold still. Easy, we can't tell you if you are too excited to hear us. Maruko nodded as she looked at her parents expectantly. Ashina smiled brightly as she knelt down to look her daughter in the eye. Naruko how would you feel about having a little sister? Naruko's world froze as her mind tried to register what she had just heard. It took her a few seconds before the gears clicked back into place and the question repeated in her mind. Re-look of frozen shock slowly became a big grin. Are you serious? Ashina smiled as she stood up and did a hand sign that dispelled a hen she was in. It was revealed that she was already showing. Kashina let out a sigh of relief as she leaned on her husband. Who, I can finally stop hiding it. She had been hiding this as a way to give her daughter a surprise for her graduation. The idea of hiding was her idea, and she was sure that the look of shock was something she was going to remember for some time. Not to mention that Minato had a camera in his hand that he used to take a picture of Naruko's shock. What the three below didn't notice was the crash that was heard upstairs. Naruto had tripped on his own feet when he heard what was said down below. He laid on the ground looking up at the ceiling with a dumbfounded expression. What the hell he couldn't believe that his mother was pregnant with another kid. A little sister, how the hell was he supposed to react to that? He stayed on the ground for a few minutes as he thought of the idea of having a little sister. He then sat up and took a breath as he determined to himself. This changes nothing. He stood up, moved to sit on his bed, and looked out the window. Not like my life will get any better with a little sister coming. He sighed as he knew that his plans would continue. He had nothing against the coming baby, he just had plans for his future that he couldn't stop for anything. Maybe she won't be like the rest of my family. That thought made him smile, but it dropped when his senses picked up someone approaching, fast. Back downstairs, Naruko was pressing her ear to Kashina's belly, as if she would be able to hear the baby. Kashina giggled at how her daughter thought she could hear anything. 
She patted Naruko's head. You won't be able to hear anything yet, Dadabane. SHHHH, I can hear something. Naruko continued to listen for anything, but was having a hard time doing so. Minato chuckled at that and was about to say something till. Lord Hokage. An Anbu landed inside the room unannounced and knelt down in front of his commander. Minato frowned at this break in protocol, but his mind went to how this would only happen if something urgent happened. What is it? The Anbu lifted his head to look at the man. I am sorry to disturb you, but you must hear this. Well? The Anbu paused for a moment before giving the news. Naruto Namikaze has stolen the sacred scroll from your office. There was a pause from all three of the Namikaze family till the patriarch spoke up. What? He turned his head toward the stairs before he ran toward them, with his daughter following. Once he was on the second floor, he jumped across the hall to land in front of Naruto's door before he burst into the room. When he went inside, he saw that the room was empty with the window open. He grit his teeth before he turned around and ran back downstairs. He spoke to the Anbu in an authoritative voice. Gather all the Anbu, Jonin, and Chunin. They are to find Naruto and retrieve the scroll immediately. He and the Anbu disappeared from the room as they now had to find and subdue Naruto. Naruko was looking out the window as she frowned at how Naruto had done something like this. Her eyes scanned the rooftop she could see but saw nothing. Clenching her fists, she jumped out the window to find her brother. What the hell are you doing, Naruto? Naruto was roof hopping, avoiding any sign of shinobi around. He was not going to be caught, not now. He had something to do and he was going to do it. Naruto hid behind the corner of a building as he saw a group of Chunin jumping across the rooftops just a few streets away. He waited a few seconds after they had left before he smirked and tightened his grip on the large scroll he had in his arms. They just don't let up, do they? He looked at the scroll and smiled at how he was able to get this out of the Hokage office. Figuring out the patrol paths and times when they rotate in new guards was a pain in the ass, but now that I have this, I can finally leave this stupid village after everything I went through. He swung the scroll onto his back before he moved to the side and toward the forest. He knew that if he made it to the forest without being seen, he would be in the clear as no one would consider it possible for him to make it there. Naruko landed in a crouched position with her hands in between her legs, holding onto the roof's edge, as she looked around for any sign of her brother. Damn it, Naruto, where are you? She was racking her brain for a reason for Naruto to do something this stupid. I mean, I get that he might not like how far behind he is, but that doesn't mean he has to do something so stupid. She knew that the moment that Naruto is found, he is going to be in the biggest trouble ever. Naruko. The girl looked below to see Aruka waving her down. Figuring that he might be able to help, she jumped off the ledge and onto the street. She walked up to him and greeted the man. Hey, sensei, what are you doing out here? Aruka gave her a flat look that screamed why do you think he let out a sigh as he remembered that this was Naruko he was talking to. She was a bit of an airhead. I'm looking for your brother. He's stolen the forbidden scroll and this is a grave crime, one that could bring grave consequences. He didn't want to say that he had some sense of satisfaction in the idea of the boy getting in trouble like this. Even though he knew it was petty, he could not help but feel that the boy needs to be punished. For a specific reason. Naruko huffed as she crossed her arms and looked down the street. Okay, so you don't know where he went or anything. I should have thought about that, but I guess I just needed any kind of help to find him. Naruko let out a sigh as he asked. Wouldn't you know where he might be? He is your brother. Naruko started to think of any place she would know Naruto to go. After a minute, she couldn't help but internally frown at how she had no idea where he would hang out or hide. She hadn't spent any time with him at all, if you don't count the matches she always won. She brought her hands to her head and pulled on her hair as she growled in frustration. That idiot has no idea what the hell he did. She let her hair go before she frantically ruffled her hair before she let out a huff. She began to walk away from the Chunin as she still had to find Naruto. I'm gonna beat some sense into him when I find him. Before she could jump away to keep looking for Naruto, her sensei spoke up. Wait. He walked up to her as she gave him a questioning look. I'm going with you. Maybe we can figure out what he is up to and talk him out of it. Naruko thought about it for a second before she shrugged. If you want, but we gotta find him first. Naruko thought about where would be the best place for the boy to go if the whole village was chasing him. There really isn't any place for him to go to be safe since no facility would harbor him. With the lockdown in effect, all buildings would close and the denizens would not open for anyone. He just couldn't think of anywhere the boy would go. Naruko could see Aruka thinking about the possibilities, and she groaned at how long it was taking. She looked around and her eyes stopped at the main gates of the village. For a solid minute she stared at them before she looked toward the man. Maybe he left the village. Aruka paused in his musing as he looked at her in befuddlement. That's a random idea. What makes you think he left the village? And how would he even be able to leave? He doesn't have the skill to get there without being seen by any of the Chunin or the gate guards. Naruko gave a frustrated shrug. I don't know. I'm only guessing here. 
I don't know anywhere in the village he could hide, and it would be dumb if he just walked around the village. I know he lacks skill, but I don't think he is that dumb. Besides, the gates are open and there weren't any guards when we got the alert. There is a 15-minute gap between rotations at that time, since the previous pair usually head home early since nothing happens here. Aruka would have wondered how she would know that, but he remembered that she was the Hokage's daughter. It would make sense if she knew some things that the general public wouldn't know. I don't know. Naruko didn't like that they were just standing here and not doing anything. Looking back to the gate, she figured she should just try something and she jumped toward the gate. Naruko was stunned by the sudden action before he snapped out of it and jumped after her. Wait, Naruko. The two roof hopped toward the gate, with no way of knowing if they were heading in the right direction. Naruto was jumping through the trees as he was making his way away from the village. He stopped on one of the branches and looked back to see if there was anyone following him. He smirked when he saw he was in the clear. Can't believe that they aren't even looking outside the village. How stupid can they be? He felt good, knowing that he was able to get away scot-free, and with a scroll that had a bunch of secret jutsu that the village was far too concerned to use. He looked at the scroll and smiled as he figured he had time to look at some of the contents. With how they ain't looking for me, I can take my time with this. He swung the scroll off his back and on his lap as he sat on the branch. He looked it over and began to wonder how much more powerful he would be if he started using these jutsu. Undoing the seal, he unfurled it and began to look through them one at a time. There's even clan jutsu here. This is just too good. Can't believe that they put all these jutsu in one spot. Made it way too easy for me, and now it's all mine. Yeah, I doubt that. Before Naruto could even turn his head, a foot impacted the side of his face and sent him flying to the ground before he crashed hard into some foliage. The scroll fell down to the ground with a thud as the assailant landed on the branch. The one that landed on the branch was Naruto. He stood up and crossed his arms as he scowled at the bushes. You have no idea how long I have wanted to do that to you Mizuki. Coming out of the bushes was Mizuki with a bit of blood dripping from his mouth. He scowled up at the brat as he wiped his mouth. What are you doing here, you little shit? Naruto rolled his eyes as he pointed at the man. You henged into me, stole the scroll, got witnessed by a bunch of others, and you wonder why I came here. Sarcasm was dripping out of him as he gestured to the scroll below him. He uncrossed his arms as he rolled his shoulders. I came here to kick your ass for using me as a scapegoat and for the years in the academy trying to sabotage my path to getting this headband. This got the man to scoff as he couldn't believe that the weakest student in the academy thought he could take on a chunin like him. Haha, ha, ha, what makes you think a little shit like you could take me, he was interrupted when a fist slammed into his face and the back of his head crashed into the ground. Naruto jumped back a few meters as he watched the man groan. That's what makes me think I can beat you. Mizuki was growling as he sat up with murder in his eyes. I'm gonna make you regret ever being born. He pulled out a kunai and charged at the boy, aiming to kill him with extreme satisfaction. Naruto watched as the man ran toward him, and he himself couldn't help but smirk, though unlike Mizuki, his wasn't sadistic at least, not mad sadistic. When Mizuki was within range, he thrusted the kunai toward Naruto's heart, only for it to be deflected as Naruto used his pawn to hit Mizuki's wrist. Naruto then brought up his free hand and struck the underside of Mizuki's chin with the palm, throwing the man's head back. Naruto then grabbed Mizuki's other wrist before he swung the man in a circle and throwing him at a tree. Mizuki crashed into the tree trunk and let out a silent scream, half a second before Naruto's knee struck the man's stomach, causing the man to fold over it. Naruto kicked off the man and up to another branch as he looked down at Mizuki, who was on his knees holding his stomach in agony as he made squeaks of pain. You always thought you were better than everyone around you, but you are barely better than a genin. The clan heirs are much better than you. You're a chunin in name only, and nothing more than a self-centered rogue shinobi that weasels his way into whatever benefits him. Mizuki was gasping for air as he heard what the brat said. He began to grind his teeth as he was furious at how he was being looked down upon by the very brat that should have died long ago. You, little shit. You're nothing but a fucking waste of space. You who should have died when I sent out that mob against you all those years ago. He began to shuffle his feet under him and tried to push himself up. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this little confession. You're the one that sent that mob after me. Huh, I thought it was someone else, though now that I think about it, he wouldn't actually do something so blatant. He paused as he thought harder on that, as he put a finger to the side of his head. Or maybe he would. Can't say I know him well enough. He looked down as the chunin had gotten to his feet. Well, that just makes this even more worth it. He brought his hand up to a tiger seal as he smirked down at the man. Mizuki saw the kid do a hand sign and figured that it was a bluff about using some jutsu. He knew that Naruto didn't have any jutsu to use since he hadn't done anything except get his ass handed to him. He reached up to grab the large shuriken he had on his back. Let's see you avoid this the second his fingers touched the metal, his hand dropped to his side as if something pulled it down. But the his other arm followed and now hung at his sides. 
Mizuki grit his teeth as he tried to move them, but they felt as if boulders were attached to them. What the hell? That would be the sealed tags I slapped on your wrists. Mizuki looked up at the boy before he looked back at his wrists and saw that there were some tags wrapped around them. How the hell? Where the hell did you get these? Naruto sat on the branch he was on and swung one of his legs lazily back and forth as he gave the man a smirk. I made them. I originally used them for training, but I figured I could use them in fights if I can put them on my opponent. Makes it easier to win a fight. Izuki glared at Naruto as he tried to lift his arms. He was able to lift them a tad, but they fell back to his side. There's no way a loser like you could make seals like these and use them in fights. You had to have someone tell you about these and got them from someone. Naruto frowned at the accusation before he dropped down, ran up to Mizuki, and gave him a hard uppercut, one that threw the man off his feet, before he spun in the air and thrusted his foot into the man's stomach, sending Mizuki flying. Once he landed on the ground, Naruto shrugged. Even if that was true, does that really change the fact that you are getting your ass handed to you by me? Mizuki was face first in the grass as he was breathing heavily in anger. He glared at the boy as he once again tried to pick himself up, shifting his feet under him once more. He thought about how he could take off the tags and figured that he could do it if he shocked the boy enough. Hey, brat, wanna know why the whole village hates you? He smirked as he saw that his words grabbed the boy's attention. Haven't you ever wondered why everyone hates your guts no matter where you go? Naruto eyed the man in intrigue as he was interested in hearing what the guy had to say. Tell me, why does everyone hate me? Azuki could hear the desperation in the boy's voice and his grin grew manic. He knew that when he channeled chakra to his limbs, he would be able to reach the tags, rip them off, and then use the shock of the boy to drive his shuriken into the boy's chest. The reason everyone in the village hates you is because on the day Naruko was born, the fourth Hokage used a jutsu to seal away the fox that attacked the village. He sealed it inside you. You are the reincarnation of the nine-tailed fox. He immediately channeled chakra into his arms and lifted his hands to rip the tags off. Naruto stared wide-eyed at the man as his mind registered what was just said. He stood there with his mouth agape at the news. Mizuki was about to rip the tags off his wrists until his arms suddenly felt heavier and whatever momentum he gained was immediately lost. What the hell? Are you freaking kidding me? Naruto brought his hands to his head as he began to scratch it frantically. That's the reason for all the crap I had to go through all this time, arg of all the stupid idiotic ggrrrrrr he began to stomp back and forth as he continued to grumble to himself. After a minute, he finally stopped and glared at the man. Where the hell did you get that kind of info? Who the hell says something like that? News flash, I don't have the Kaiubi in me, Naruko does. She is the one that dear old dad sealed the Kaiubi in. I don't have a thing from the fox, and now you're telling me that the villagers think I have it. He pulled his hair as he continued his rant. Sheep. No. Dogs. Dogs that follow the leader, the leader. The letter -er, and will say woof when the hokage says bark. He said the leader part in a sing-song tone as his rant continued for another few minutes since he was beyond angry about what he learned. After taking a deep breath, he felt his anger die down and mumbled to himself. Sorry to all dogs. He looked toward Mizuki and smirked at how the man was giving his arms a confused look. Yeah, channeling chakra into your arms won't do you any good. I added a secondary seal to it that absorbs the chakra of whatever the tag is slapped on. In this case, you. The more chakra you pump into your arms, the heavier they get, and they will stay that heavy, even if you stop putting chakra into your arms. Not only that, but I even added a third seal to it. If enough chakra is absorbed, it becomes an explosive tag and goes boom. So you either keep pumping more chakra into your arms to try and get the tags off, risking you losing them from the explosion, or you stop using chakra and just have dead arms. Azuki didn't believe the explosion part of the bluff and continued to channel chakra into his arms. He slowly started to lift one up to the other's wrist to take it off, but was interrupted when a palm strike hit him center chest. He fell to the ground and glared up at the boy that stood where he once was. Naruto looked at the man as if he was an idiot. How stupid are you? Even if I was bluffing, you don't know that. You are willing to risk your own arms in order to take them off. Yeah, that's smart. Sorry, but I can't have you dying on me since I need you to clear my name. The man growled at the boy as he was ready to spit in his face. What makes you think interrupted again by the side of his face hit by Naruto's foot? You are at my mercy right now, and I am not in the mood to take any more crap from the Hokage. You are going to be captured, and you either tell them honestly, they torture you till you tell them, or Yamanaka pokes into your head and gets the answers anyway. And as a Chunin, you are trained in the art of keeping your mouth shut, since you don't seem to be able to do that when you are on your knees. He made a shadow clone before pointing at the scroll which the clone nodded to. He wanted that scroll out of the way cause he wasn't sure how far he was gonna go with the man. He cracked his knuckles as he walked toward Mizuki. He dropped his arms to his side as golden chains with kunai tips began to slink down from his palm. 
And since no one is here, I can finally go all out on someone without having to hide anything. You have no idea how hard it is to look hurt when I'm in those academy spars. Kiba has some skill, but I've trained my body in endurance, so his punches only tickled. He stopped a few meters from Mizuki as he swayed his arms to have the chains make their clinking noise. A way to make the environment a little more unsettling. Ready for our sparring match. Mizuki pushed himself onto his legs and began to channel Chakra into his arms at a rapid pace, in order to just rip the tags off and kill the brat. He was so pissed off that he didn't even register that the boy was using golden chains. I'm gonna kill you, you piece of shy erg. One of Naruto's chains wrapped around Mizuki's neck tight enough to shut the man up. Get over here. Naruto pulled hard on the chain and caused Mizuki to fly toward him. Once Mizuki was close enough, Naruto dispelled his other chain and brought his fist into Mizuki's face. He then began to have a one-sided beatdown on Mizuki's face as his fist jackhammered non-stop at all angles. The occasional kick that came from the man would be blocked by Naruto's leg till he brought his fist on Mizuki's knee, causing a snap to be heard. Once he was sure that Mizuki couldn't counter, Naruto jumped in the air and slammed his foot into the side of the man's face, sending him flying again. Once Naruto landed, he gripped the chain, causing the chain to stop extending and causing the man to come to an abrupt stop by the neck. He grabbed the chain with both hands and began to spin, with Mizuki following. And around you go. Mizuki crashed into branches, bushes and into trees, as Naruto spun as if he was a top. Cracks can be heard when his body slammed into a tree before sliding past it. Though whether the crack came from the tree or Mizuki's bones, Naruto didn't concern himself with it. Naruto continued to do this for a few more spins till he saw Mizuki crash through a tree trunk and dispel the chain, causing Mizuki to be sent flying once more. He threw his palm toward where Mizuki was sent and shot out the other chain. Mizuki bounced off another tree, coughing up blood to add to the blood covering his body. He was then sharply pinned back to the tree as the chain pierced through his shoulder and to the other side of the tree. Naruto gripped the chain and gave it a tug to see it was solid. He then did a light hop off the ground as he retracted the chain, causing him to be sent flying toward Mizuki. He pulled the chain, forcing his body forward, and brought his leg up to kick Mizuki in the stomach. The kick was so hard that the tree itself snapped and fell over. He landed with his foot on top of Mizuki's chest, as the man was still pinned to the trunk by the chain. How was that for dead last? Mizuki could barely see anything through his swollen eyes and coughed up blood as he wheezed in air. I'll fucking kill. Naruto ripped out his chain from the man's shoulder and groaned. Even after being beaten down this bad, you still act like you are better than me. Is it so hard to admit that I am stronger and beat you? He didn't wait for an answer since he already knew the answer. He dispelled the chain and crossed his arms as he wondered how long it would be until others arrived. He knew that he didn't have a lot of time which meant that he would have to work fast. He reached into his pouch and pulled out a blank slip of paper. Wish I made some of these ahead of time so I didn't have to waste time on this. He put the slip of paper on the man's forehead and pressed his finger in the center of it. He stuck his tongue out in concentration, and after a minute, a seal appeared on the tag. Good, I got it right the first time. I gotta practice more on this. He stepped away from the man and brought his hand up in a ram seal. Honestly, never had many chances to use the seal since I learned to avoid being assaulted, but you can be the test subject for the newest version of the seal. He saw Mizuki trying to blow the seal off, but he could only get it to flutter a small bit. Don't worry, you won't remember any of the beatdown I gave you, since this seal is supposed to erase your memory. It works but I haven't been able to get it to not hurt when used. Don't worry, I'll be fine, but you he left the comment hanging before he channeled chakra into his seal. Mizuki suddenly started to scream as he felt a monumental amount of pain inside his skull, and electric sparks were coming off the seal tag. Naruto watched as Mizuki screamed as he held the hand sign. He wanted to make sure enough time passed before he let the man go. Sitting on the branch behind Naruto was the clone as he held the scroll up at his side. He watched as the boss did his job, but turned his head over his shoulder as he sensed an incoming chakra signature. Hey, boss, incoming. Naruto looked over his shoulder at his clone and nodded. His gaze followed the clone as it dropped down to ground level and left the scroll leaning on the side of a tree. He got the clone's memories when it dispelled and couldn't help but smirk. Figures. He turned back to Mizuki and figured that enough time had passed. He undid his hand seal and smirked at the twitching man. He walked up and watched as the tag disintegrated. I still have to find a way to make it less flashy. He waited a few minutes before he let out a sigh and jumped into the air as something wrapped around the spot he was standing. He landed on a tree branch and smirked at the one that tried to capture him. Didn't know you would miss me this much, Anko. Humming from behind a tree was Anko Midarashi as her snakes retracted into her sleeve. She looked at the boy with a smirk as she walked up to him. I haven't missed you that much, Gaki. Naruto rolled his eyes as he brought his hand up with a finger. 
if I recall, out of all the times you have tried to catch me, I have escaped you 478 times, well you have only caught me 223 times. Ank gave a cheeky smile as she made her way to him. Yeah, well, I wasn't really serious all those times, and it was fun playing cat and mouse with you, but her cheeky smile became deadly serious as she looked him in the eyes. I'm not playing around this time. Naruto frowned at the sight of a serious Anko. Don't tell me that you also think I took the scroll. You're standing in the middle of the forest with the forbidden scroll right over there. She jabbed a thumb at the scroll. How do you expect me to see it when everyone had seen you take it? What about this ass? He pointed his finger at the unconscious Mizuki. He's the one that hinged into me and took the scroll. Anko looked at the beaten Chunin and asked. Who is he? Naruto grunted as he answered. He's a Chunin instructor from the academy. Anko crossed her arms as she gave him a disbelieving look. You trying to tell me that a Chunin instructor broke into the Hokage's office on his own and stole a very important scroll that should have been sealed away by heavy security seals. Naruto threw his arms in the air in frustration. How the hell am I supposed to know? Anko shook her head with a sigh. Sorry, Gaki, but it's more believable that the Hokage's kid would be able to do it since you would have a better chance at getting in. Naruto gave Anko a dark glare at the accusation. Like he even considers me his kid. Hell, he is so ready to get rid of me that he might just use this as an excuse. He took in a breath as he did not want to make things worse by arguing his point. The odds are against him right now. If you don't believe me, have a Yamanaka go through his head. Anko raised an amused eyebrow. That confident that you are innocent, huh? Despite what others think, I'm not out to kill anyone. Another raised eyebrow from the woman as she looked at the clearly broken man behind the kid. Naruto saw this and shrugged his shoulders. He ain't dead. I need him alive if I want to prove that he was the one that stole the scroll, but I did want payback for all the crap he put me through over the years in the academy. Anko's serious look melted away into a smirk as she shrugged her shoulders non-committedly. Yeah, I figured as much. I just wanted to make sure you had everything already planned out to prove your innocence, or you were just gonna wing it. Naruto gave her a deep panned look as he saw that she was no longer giving off any intention of bringing him in. I hate it when you do that. Making me think that you were gonna actually bring me in. Oh no, Gaki, I am bringing you in, but I just want to make sure you have enough to back up your claim. The Hokage called for you to be captured, and I can't really go against the order. But I ain't gonna tie you up and drag you there that's for our own fun. Naruto dropped his head into his hands as he had not thought of what he was gonna do when he actually met with the Hokage. Sure he thought about brining in the one that framed him, but with how he knew Minato to be with him yeah, his luck was not that good. Anko walked up to Mizuki and looked over Naruto's handiwork. Gotta say, you really did a number on him. Naruto lifted his head from his hands and looked at Mizuki. His mind went over what he should do, and he came up with something that would ease some of the eyes on him at least a little bit. Anko watched as Naruto walked to Mizuki and knelt down to him. She saw the Gaki go through some hand signs, and his hands glow green. What are you doing? Healing him. Anko was even more confused now. Why? Didn't you say that you had a grudge against him? I'm not doing it for him, I'm doing it for me. Now I'm lost. Naruto continued to heal Mizuki the best he could. He saw some of the swelling die down and the lacerations being closed. It was slow, but he didn't have much time to practice and make it go faster. If we bring him in like this, they will start to ask questions. And none of his wounds look like something you would do. So I am healing him so he doesn't look like he was mauled by a bear. Me? I didn't do a thing to him. Yeah, but I am gonna say you did. He looked over his shoulder to see her looking at him skeptically. Look, I don't want more attention than I already have. Just do this for me and I'll buy you Dango for a month. Anko put a finger to her chin and thought before she gained a devilish smirk. Make it two months for each meal and you have a deal. Naruto grimaced as he knew that Anko's love for Dango is almost as big as Naruko's obsession with Raymond. There goes my damn savings. Hopefully I can build it back up on missions. Fine. Anko beamed at how she now had free Dango for two months. She walked up to the two and watched as Naruto continued to heal Mizuki. After ten minutes, Naruto stopped and wiped his forehead. Damn, I didn't think it would be this hard. Anko looked over the man and was impressed at how well he was able to use the Mystic Palm Jutsu. Now bad, Gaki, but it doesn't look like my handiwork. Naruto stood up and looked at her with a raised eyebrow. Then how do we make it look like yours? Ugh arg, what the hell Mizuki was waking up but felt like his body was on fire in pain. He opened his eyes and saw that there were two people standing over him. When his vision cleared, he was overcome with anger at the sight of Naruto and Anko. Why you piece of SST 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 Mizuki was interrupted when he felt sharp stinging on his arms, legs, torso, and his face. He fell unconscious once more. Naruto watched as several snakes retracted back into Anko's sleeve after they had taken a few bites at Mizuki. Anko gave a cheeky smile at the boy before she poked him in the head. Now it looks like my handiwork. 
Naruto smiled at the woman before his mod soured as he recognized a couple of incoming chakra signatures. Naruto. Said boy looked up in time to see Naruko and Naruka jumping down. Glad I made it in time. Naruko stomped up to her brother and glared at him. What the hell were you thinking? Stealing the scroll from dad's office, do you have any idea what you did? Glared back at his sister as he got in her face. For your information, I didn't steal the damn thing. It was Mizuki that stole the scroll and tried to frame me for it. Naruka crossed his arms as he stared hard at the boy. Naruto, that is a pretty flimsy excuse. And why would Mizuki steal the scroll anyway? He is a respected chunin instructor of Konoha, he would have no reason to steal it. Naruko nodded. Unlike you. I get that you aren't the best, but if you wanted to get stronger, you should listen to mom and dad more, instead of ignoring what they teach you. Naruto was so tempted to punch Naruko in the face. Her ignorance and blind faith in everything they tell her got on his nerves. His fist tightened as it was close to lifted up and doing just that, but he was interrupted by Anko speaking up. Actually, what he said was true. It was Mizuki that stole the scroll. I came across the two with Mizuki hinged as Naruto before he dispelled it and began to brag about how he put the blame on the Gaki. Naruka looked shocked at hearing the news and looked between the three. Are you sure it wasn't Naruto that had the scroll? You mean the big thing that is hard to miss? Yeah, pretty sure I saw it on Mizuki's back when he dispelled the hinge. Naruka looked back at Anko in disbelief. Why would Misuki take the scroll? Enko shrugged. Don't know, but when we get him back to the T and I department, we'll find out. Naruko was also shocked at hearing this as she looked at Enko. Her mind thought about what was said and realized that she was blaming her brother for something that he didn't do. She looked back at him and was about to say something till Naruto Namikas. Naruto growled at the voice as a squad of Anbu dropped down around him with their blades at the ready. By order of the Hokage, you are under arrest. Stand down. The Anbu looked toward the snake woman as she walked up to them. Naruto is innocent of any wrongdoing here. It was this Chunin instructor that had stolen the scroll and pinned the blame on the Namika's kid. She pointed at the unconscious man as everyone looked at him. The leader of the Anbu, Dragon, walked up to the woman. Are you sure about this, special Jonin Anko Midarashi? Anko kept her growl to herself as she could tell he was demeaning her and disregarding her statement due to her status as Orochimaru's former apprentice. Have a Yamanaka go through his head if you are doubting me, or you can give him to my department, and Ibiki will have him signing about his dirty little secrets. She stared the man down, not giving anything away. After a minute, the leader of the Anbu nodded. We will do just that. But regardless, our orders are to take the boy in. He turned to the other Anbu and ordered. Take him. Naruto soon found his arms being restrained behind his back. Hey, I can walk on my own. Let go of me. He struggled as they restrained him and began to drag him away. Another Anbu picked up the forbidden scroll and followed the group. Dragon picked up the unconscious Mizuki and began to follow his men. He looked at Aruka and Naruko. Come with us, your statement will be taken when we return to the Hokage office. Naruka nodded as he followed the Anbu. Naruko stayed in her spot for a minute as she looked at the struggling Naruto. She was so sure that he stole the scroll in order to prove something to their parents, and yet, there is now the possibility that he was framed by one of her instructors, someone that had been good to her. She frowned as it didn't seem right that Mizuki stole the scroll and blamed her brother. She was brought out of her thoughts when she was patted on the shoulder. Come on, Gaki too, we better get moving. The faster we get this over with, the faster we can get to something more fun. Anko gently pushed Naruko to start walking as she thought to herself. You better be a hundred percent sure about this, Gaki. I'm risking my own neck for you. 